So this is the Jurassicraft mod, one of the biggest dinosaur mods that you will find for Minecraft. It adds literally dozens of different dinos that can be tamed and bred. Really a very cool mod. So me and my friend Martha decided we were going to build an entire Jurassic Park of the mod. Unfortunately, on the way, our plane crashed on a mysterious island already filled with the dinosaurs. So join us in building Jurassic Park. The first thing we did was try to establish who was actually at fault for the plane crash. After a few minutes of bickering, we spotted our first dinosaurs. Um, yeah, that doesn't look too friendly, does it? The plane or the dinosaur? The, the, the fucking dinosaur! No, the fucking plane! For fuck's sake. <laughs> After a while more exploring, we finally found a place that seemed perfect to build a base, and I lightly bullied Martha into making a plan for the park. Um, where is it? The head goes like this, doesn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, just do so this is a very good artistic rendition. How about here? Okay, well I was thinking... Because then, other... then we can do colour. We can do like this, the main hub. What we did not realise until much later was that this plan was in fact not a plan at all and just a stupid drawing of, well, basically nothing. This definitely did not lead to any confusion later on whatsoever. Either way, the very first thing on the list for us to do was build a laboratory where we could actually breed dinos. We had decided early on that we wanted to have two labs, a public laboratory, where people could come on guided tours to see us create dinosaurs, and the real laboratory, which would be underground, away from prying eyes. One problem we realised quite early on is that the island didn't actually have any villagers on it at all, which would mean that we would need to cure zombie villagers to get access to trades, and to a minimum wage workforce for our dino burger stalls. Now, Meanwhile I was contemplating how to create a workforce out of zombie villagers, Martha was off killing baby dinosaurs, something which ended about as well as you would expect. Oh, they've had a baby! Have they? They've somehow had sex over lava and they've had a baby. Oh, Hello. cute. I suppose you haven't killed it yet. My, my sword's in my death thing. <laughs> Is that all that's stopping you? <laughs> I killed it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Our next challenge was establishing a food source. Since the mod required you to actively feed dinosaurs or they would die of starvation. So we went out and found a few goats. But getting them into a pen turned out to be a bit more of a challenge than I expected. They've stopped following me. Oh my god, they're amazing. Oh my god, they're billy goats. They've given up on following me. This one's a female. There we go. You've I've actually got... got a female and a male. I think so. I dug out the beginning of a little tunnel network beneath the lab, and that is where I called it quits for the first day, as we'd been playing for quite a few hours at this point. Martha, however, kept building overnight. The next day when I got up, I went into some quick mining before we went for a walk to try and find some more animals for our farm. Bunch of skeleton of uh, dinosaur bones up here and I don't know why. Pick them up, we can use them to make oh, really good. I have, that was the yeah. plan. <laughs> but no, there's a bunch of dinosaur bones up here, uh, so something's killing them. They could just be starving. I mean, yeah, they could be starving, I just don't see why um, there's so many on this mountain and not everywhere else. Like, it doesn't really make much sense. Oh my god, that makes sense! Nope, 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 nope. It sees me. It sees me. It's it, I think. Is it? Or is it killing an enderman? Oh, Run. Run away. Run away. While I was struggling to round up the animals, yet again, Martha was having her own problems. In fact, I'm trying to get this guy yeah. up the crops. I don't know where his hitbox is to move him, so... I don't care where you go, mate. Just go somewhere. <laughs> not, not in. Go out. <laughs> Go away, please. Josh, I might need another person. Nah, I think you got it. Josh, it keeps coming back. Right. <laughs> Josh, you've just destroyed it. Well, well, you're the one who... 
What do these guys eat? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Just leave it, they'll move. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck you. Was that really necessary? Yes. It was on my crop. It was around this time that I built our first builder's ones, which are just such a lifesaver for a survival build like this, as it allows you to place multiple blocks at once. While I was at it, I also built a nice reinforced door to keep all of the dinosaurs out, and Martha broke it within 10 minutes. But she did finish building the roof of the lab, so I didn't kill her. This time. Instead, I went and took all of our diamonds and used them to make a diamond pickaxe and a nether portal. The only real reason I did this was so I could go and gather some nether quartz to make a proper elevator down to the underground tunnel. I will admit that we did have a small problem caused by the portal, of nether pigmen coming through into our base. At this point, my focus had started to shift towards actually getting us the equipment needed to get dinosaurs, which requires just so many different machines. So to help speed up our resource acquisition, I spent an hour or so mining out a new area, and an auto miner. I built this beneath the underground tunnel, and used a glass elevator to get down to it. To get the miner working, I ended up using all but one of our diamonds, but I managed to set it up so that in theory it will power itself as any coal mined would be automatically pumped back into the machines that power the miner. Another advantage of the miner was that it did not destroy the fossils, which was amazingly convenient for us. I would stay up far longer than I wanted to admit getting all of these machines built for the dinosaurs. I hoped that if I built them, I could then leave Martha to get the dinosaurs ready while I was at work. But nope, I forgot to make one machine, and instead of building it herself, even though we had the resources, she gave up. Either way, we were eventually ready to start getting dinosaurs, which meant we would need to build our first pen, which we decided would be a small test lab. This actually led to an argument about what the plan for the park actually was. Yeah, you remember that plan from earlier that wasn't really a plan? Well, it turns out that it was so bad that we both drew dramatically different conclusions from it on what the plan for the park actually was. This is the beach where you enter. Yeah. This wood... Uh, actually no, this isn't quite... Here we go. This wood is where we are now, the lab. Yeah. I'm saying the entrance to this place, so the entrance to the museum complex, Right, can you give me a block? I haven't got one. <laughs> That's not what I've already <laughs> placed. Thank you. Should be here, facing the entrance. So people come in, they're walking down the Grand Processional, and they see, oh shit, that's fucking awesome. You're saying it should be here. Yeah, it should be, basically. Um, so, so, this is at like the middle. So, it's going to be like, this is going to be... Um, the museum area, they have to walk past things to get to the main attraction, which you can see from far off. So you have to. The walk only problem down is you're not going to be able to see that. it. If sorry, are you saying you want people to go around this water thing here? Yeah, because you're going to have That's too stuff big. In it. No, I'm not saying go around it. So they're going to come like sort of near the water. So they're going to walk past the water. So you're gonna, the path is going to follow it round, so it will literally be left. The path right, but we can't really put... Right. Dark. So basically that what you're saying sense. is, people are going to enter the park and then have to immediately turn right, walk right about 100 blocks, and then go north. No, we're going to do sort of like a... Because the beach is quite a way down there. So there's going to be sort of like a winding sort of path that goes to okay. like a wooded area. Okay, I'm starting to get what you're saying. Okay. So the museum is going to be basically at the top of where the right eye ends, in the middle. Yeah. So they're going to go right, and then they're going to have to go left to be in line with this lab again, and then go up. Yeah, kind of, but it's going to be like a winding path. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like, sorry, I, I, know, I know you're saying winding path, I'm just stuff. clarifying. After deciding on what we actually were going to do, Martha started work on the first lab enclosure. Well, I got us our first through dinos, which were Proco... Proco... Pro yeah, I ain't even gonna try to say that. Instead, we're just gonna call them Procros. Now, 
I finished making these dino eggs well before Martha finished building the enclosure, so I put a CCTV camera down. Then, it finally was time. You ready? My thing is, before you put these down, how are you going to replace that door when they're all running around? We'll just replace the back door and then replace this one. Alright, we'll good luck. Okay. Right, ready? Yeah, go and put them down. Put them on the <gasps> beach. Look at it. Oh. I might have crashed. <laughs> oh, well, I've placed all five down. Oh no, I'm here. Oh, they're asleep. They're tiny. We had done it. It had taken us a lot longer than we had anticipated, but we had finally taken the first steps to creating Jurassic Park. The biggest problem we were going to have was feeding all of them. So I went to check on our little chicken egg farm that Martha had made to see if we could use any of the eggs to spawn chickens for the dinos to eat. First off, it became immediately clear that we were going to have way too many chickens in the farm, creating just so many eggs, and also that we had a very tiny zombie pigman problem. But this problem did remind me, I had been wanting to make some sliding doors using funky locomotion. However, to do that, I would need to make myself a mini factory to gather all the resources I needed. So I went and used several pickaxes to dig myself out a new room in the basement service corridor of the lab. One of the main components of the moving walls is Invar, but to get that I was going to need a few other things, so I made a coke oven, a crude blast furnace, and an alloy kiln. The good bonus of this Invar production line is that it also gave me access to coal coke, which is basically a much better version of coal. Meanwhile I went borderline insane building all of this, Martha was busy getting us some more dinosaurs. She made a nice little outdoor area for some quarries and parasaurs to grow up, before they can be moved to a more permanent pen. There was also some new dinosaurs put in the underground pen, with them being these cute monkey ewes, or however you say it. Martha also discovered that literal tons of eggs coming out of her farm, might actually be much more useful than we first anticipated. Thanks to the bird's food mod, if you put an egg in a furnace, you get a cooked egg that many of the dinosaurs seem to be able to eat. This would be perfect and would also create a stable food source for both us and the dinos. However, I'll admit that Martha did go a slight bit egg mad. During the time we were trying to get the door working, we would end up arguing about why the server was so damn laggy. Since, as far as we were aware, there shouldn't really have been a reason for it to be so. Eventually though, Martha found the problem. Oh. My. God. I think I found the source of our lag. Oh. Oh. What is it? What is it? Oh, you should come out the front. Come out the front. What's out the front? Oh no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> what could be the... What do you mean? What's oh this? my god! How did that happen? <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! You think some of them will go out fell into that hole? Ow. Yeah. Babe. Get rid of this baby skeleton. I can't even kill this baby skeleton. I oh, know, I know. My game is completely Yeah, it was fine until we discovered them. I don't know how long they've been here. They must have been here for a very long time, because some of those are... Oh, right, pick it up, most... pick it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Most of those are fully grown adults. <sighs> oh, my God, mm. my game is running so much better. Oh, my God, it is as well. <laughs> With that finally sorted, I went back to the factory and finished building my sliding door, wiring it up to a furnace generator. This door was also a proof of concept. You see, one of the big ideas we had for the dinosaur pens was to have these giant sliding doors to get into the pens and do any maintenance needed for the dinosaurs. Once I finished the doors, it was time to turn my attention to the next big dinosaur project, the herbivore pen. The plan was simple, to create a lazy river style ride which circles an island where most of the herbivore dinosaurs can stay. Since the dinos don't seem to like going in deep water, 
we would be able to keep them inside without needing to build a bunch of electric fences. Martha had already made a start digging out the river, so I went to check up on her and make sure she was actually doing something. Let's see. Welcome to my hole. <laughs> Since Martha seemed to be losing her mind, I very kindly decided to stay and help by cutting down the trees in the middle of the river so Martha could do some terraforming. Thank God for the tree harvester mod that lets you cut down an entire tree in one go. I mean, just look at how many stacks of wood we got from just cutting down the trees on the island. To be honest, we probably could have got at least double that amount, but I got bored, so made a very small controlled fire before walking off. The herbivore pen would end up being a one week project anyway, so who cares if I started a few small fires? While this fire was burning, I went back to the factory with a new goal to increase our power production, since the next thing I really wanted to build was a computer storage system because our current system of storage was just over a dozen chests scattered around the lab. However, those require a decent amount of power to run consistently, so I smelted some copper and osmium to help make a metallurgic infuser. After a while of getting the resources together and making a macerator to crush coal, I made myself a few solar panels and placed them tucked away in the corner of the outdoor dino pen with the parasaurs and the quarries. Now, these were hardly the best solar panels in the world and would have to be upgraded later, but they would do for now. I also made a couple of energy cubes to act as batteries so the system would still run during the night. I also decided it was worth building some electric furnaces so Martha would get rid of our hopper furnace in the main lab. At this point, I took stock of what resources I had and what resources I needed to finish building the computer system. It became evident that there was one main resource I was missing. Slime balls. So, I got myself a boat, a bow, and a bunch of arrows, and set off on an adventure to find the swamp. This would be the furthest I had travelled on the island yet, and from my brief adventures so far, it was clear that the further out you went, the more dangerous the dinosaurs that appear. It didn't take long for me to come across the first evidence that the swamp was going to be dangerous. When I finally arrived, my suspicions were confirmed with there being multiple large sleeping carnivores and even a T-Rex. With the lag becoming a bit unstable, I grabbed myself the slime balls and then speedrunned my way out the swamp and back home. However, I knew I would have to return eventually to get more. When I got back, I mixed the slime balls with some string to create processor bindings, then got to work on the computer storage system. It took me a long time to get everything set up, as I had to make a crafting monitor and a bunch of cables and cable facades to hide said cables. A controller and a disk drive were also needed, and I made two storage disks, each worth 16k of storage, for a total of 32k items that could be stored in the system. After several days of work, we had finally managed to dig out the river that would border the zone, so I left Martha to flatten the remaining area out and get some of the plants ready, while I built stuff that would actually be useful, such as these cool little drills that were basically the same as diamond pickaxes, except that instead of breaking and needing to be repaired, they would run out of battery and needed to be charged. I was pretty excited about these drills, Martha, however, she wasn't as keen as me. Can I at least cook iron in those furnaces? Yes, iron. Yeah. Okay, ground rules. Ground gold. rules. Iron. Yes. Eggs. Where's, where's no. My... <laughs> where's, my... where's my fishing rod? Oh, thank you. It's not a fishing rod, is it? It's not a fucking fi Okay. Just throw it in here and charge it up. Martha had already caused me to have one panic that day, since when I left, the storage system was at 24% full, and then when I returned later the same day, it was at 94%. With Martha going crazy with the production of eggs, I decided it was time for cars. But first, I would need to get some ink. 
Where'd you go? Uh, I'm going into the water to kill the squid. Oh, okay. I'm making something to help. I mean, it's not going to help you, but it's going to help me. After a few hours, I had finally managed to build this large truck, which would be a central part of our plan. It was simple, really. We would strap a giant cage onto the back of the truck, load dinosaurs into said cage, then transport them to their new pen. This would save us a lot of time in the long run, it would also mean that we could let new dinosaurs grow to adulthood in a smaller pen, where there is less of a chance of them wandering off and dying. With the car all sorted, I turned my attention to helping Martha flatten out the area. At first, I tried unleashing the power of the drill, but quickly it became clear that that wasn't really the most convenient method ever. So I went back to the base, ripped out the auto miner, and set it up again outside. To make sure this miner only flattened the area and, well, didn't start to mine it, someone would be required to stay with the miner and keep an eye on it. And guess who I decided would do that? Leaving Martha to do all the boring stuff, I went back to the base and decided it was time for a quick spring cleaning of the eggs that Martha had been putting in the system. Come with me. Uh, I currently have something that I'm just doing this to prove a point, okay? Come through here. I mean, I know what they said about the other room, but I've uh, taken it back slightly. What, about it being bad? No, this wall. Yeah, I don't know what to do about the wall. I'm going to change it, I think. But just... bring up the eggs! <laughs> yeah, that's about five stacks worth of eggs. Not the eggs! <laughs> I'm proving a... No, 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 no! Oh. Rescue me. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> You're destroying my incinerator. The next challenge we faced was actually flooding the river. This was something which in all honesty, we had not really thought about at all. Neither of us really felt like running around for days with buckets slowly flooding the area, and we didn't have an easy access to an ice source which meant that we were really limited in how we could flood the area. That's when I came up with an idea though. If we used buildcraft water gates alongside mechanism pipes, we could take the water from an infinite water source and flood out the river, bringing the water to a nice balance level. Meanwhile I set everything we needed up, Martha decided to build something which, in all honesty, is actually pretty cool. It was this road system that goes from the lab up to the herbivore pen, and splits off with appropriate signs to show where the long neck pen will be. Now, to actually get the dinosaurs into the herbivore pen, she built this elevator system where we load the truck with the dino on it into the elevator, go underground, then drive through a tunnel, and pop up in the southwest side of the herbivore island. With that all sorted, it was finally time to load the dinosaurs into the pen. Moving. Right. Yeah, we just need. Cool. Um, the problem is, I the problem is, I don't want to bring it in here because if I bring it in here, there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to get it back out without destroying it. So yeah, if you could just get one close, Try just just get him up and get him to follow. Yeah, but the follow don't work properly. They just sort of tend to spin in a corner. Well, we'll get him as close as we can. He's actually off. Oh, he's in, but he's not in the seat I wanted to put him in. Is he in the driver's seat? What's going on? Yeah, he is. How do I... Josh, it's dying. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're just going to have to do it like that. Right, close the cage, <laughs> would you? Just in case he is actually in the cage. I can't. The door's in the way. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Right, cage closed. Cage. Yeah. Do you want to try hopping in the side seat? I don't think I can. I can give it a go. Give it a go. No, he's in it. Okay. In it. All right. Okay. I don't think that's. Oh, it looks so stupid. Too fair. I think it might just be his size. He might be too big for the uh, pen. He's moonwalking. Is what's happening, Josh. Yep. Yeah, not my. Till the end. Sit. See if that flicks. <laughs> I think he's trying to walk. To oh, there we, yeah, that worked. I mean, he's still like semi walking. He just looks like he's humping the car. Yeah. 
Josh, you know how I made a massive road so you wouldn't fucking crash and you've already gone off it? Yeah, well, the game is, believe it or not, Martha, slightly laggy. <laughs> okay. Martha, am I about to hit a tree? No, <laughs> you're not even close to one. Oh, you uh, can't <laughs> Teleported to a tree. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm like teleported around. Okay. <laughs> right, I think I'm in control. Drive really fucking slowly. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to drown the car. Drive slowly. <laughs> Muffa, okay. do you remember how we discussed that I'm gonna have to reverse the vehicle into this? Oh, Alright. See, it's not that difficult, just drive normally. Yeah, okay. Ridiculous. Alright, stop, I'm taking us down. Martha. Oh my god. Oh my god, it worked. Right, can you go call the elevator? <laughs> Holy shit. I really hope you go up. Martha, he's taking it, he's, di he's dying. <laughs> Ow, you've just run over me. I've hit the wall. <laughs> You run over me as well. I'm just. <laughs> well, you can drive it next time. Martha. I know. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Martha, this wasn't the plan. Okay. I'm bringing it back now. Martha, the, 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 this, this wasn't the plan. Right. Okay. I've, I've got Maybe an idea on how. Turn it off? Yeah, try it. Turn, it. turn the elevator up. No, I meant to turn oh. the vehicle off. What's well, I'm going to... I do apologise. That was not part of my plan. There's a nice wall as well. What do we do? This definitely worked previously, didn't it? Yeah, it definitely worked before, but I've not with this vehicle. There is another option. Kick him out. Yeah, well, there's two options. I'm going to try this one. No. Nope. Well, at least it's not killing him. I feel like we should have tested this. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the other option is to just get him out the car. And how do we do that? I know how to do it, I just don't want him to clip into a wall. No, yeah, he's going to die. Just run, run away, see if he'll... He won't, he doesn't, he won't. Nope. Nope, no, just... <sighs> attempt one, failure. Right. Time for attempt two. We're gonna have to push it because I don't want to do the follow thing. Uh, we're gonna have to do the follow thing. I don't think pushing will work. It doesn't, it doesn't follow. Well, I, it worked last time. Yeah, but I've just tried now and it's not doing it. <sighs> It's just spinning. So. Just try it. You've got to run far away. If you still push him, you get him to follow. No. Yeah, he's following you slightly. It's because he can't go up the blocks, I think. It's not. I think it's because he wants food and water, so he's trying to get there, but he's also trying to follow me, so he's just spinning. Oh. Um... I don't think we can get him up block. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay, ignore that then. All right, come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> I love this time they didn't drop it. He's back. in. Hey. Right. Bit of a loose squeeze, but right, this time you're driving. I'm hopping in the seat. Oh, I assumed you were just going to walk it. Oh, okay. Okay, here's the plan. Here's the plan. I've got a genius plan. Is this guy set to set? Yeah. Perfect. Right, 50 50 chance this works. Well, I mean... Right, there we are. Push him on the platform, push him on the platform. He's walking. He's not. Oh, on my screen, he's. Well, he's fucked on your screen, then he's fine on mine. Right, perfect. Did you just throw some meat at him? Yeah. <laughs> he's done the job a few times. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, and I got more armor than you. Come on, mate. Okay. So <laughs> one down. Yep. Go, yeah, baby. we'll move the babies over the new eggs. The ones that are placed will leave. But I've got... Move this one to the car. I'm about to do something very dumb. You gonna try and fit two in? Yeah. One in the passenger seat and one in the main seat. Alright, when you do that, I'm gonna go and grab the eggs. That's... I'm on the feeder is what I'm on. Oh, we did. Right, I'll uh, head over there. Yeah, I'll see you there. As you just saw, getting them into the pen ended up being a bit more difficult than we anticipated. However, it did teach us a lot of valuable lessons about how these dinosaurs interact with the world, and how the Minecraft Transport Simulator mod interacts with the Elevator mod. You see, the mistake we made was that we had experimented with one of the cars, I found they worked pretty well with the elevators, and just assumed that meant that all of them did work well, when in reality, that wasn't the case. Now, this left us in an awkward spot. However, the workaround we found was just to get the dinosaurs onto the elevator platform, then push them through the corridor. Not the greatest method, but it was definitely a solution. While the herbivore pen still needed a lot of work, for now, we will be turning our eyes to the next project, the carnivore pens. Now it is time to turn our attention to the first few carnivore pens. But before any of that, I owe Martha a fishing rod, which I promised her as a reward for digging out the river. Yeah, okay, I'm getting it for you now. We did have a deal. There you go, you can have your fishing rod. Oh, it's in the floor. But a fishing rod wasn't all I made. I also got around to crafting us the Jeep straight out of Jurassic Park, which would allow us to get around the park a lot faster than our current truck could transport us. So, I went for a drive up to the herbivore pen and back, and it really hit me just how much we have already built in just under one month. But it also reminded me that we have a very, very long way yet to go. And one of the things we would need to help progress the park to that next stage would be villagers. Now, because of the lack of structures, villagers do not spawn naturally on this island. But what do spawn naturally are zombie villagers. So I went out and built a big trap right outside the base, and brewed myself a few splash potions of weakness and got some golden apples. The two villagers we would end up getting would be a geneticist and a cleric. Now, the cleric doesn't really matter, but the geneticist was a massive bonus, as it meant we could now directly buy some of the stuff we needed for the dinosaurs. Once these villagers settled inside the lab, Martha wasted absolutely no time in flirting with them, and actually married the geneticist before having a child called Tesco, who she promptly used as a weapon. Yeah, unsurprisingly, Tesco would never make it to adulthood. Meanwhile, Martha tried to work out how to be a mother. I extended the tunnel under the base to add a few new rooms, but would also, after a few days, come back to an entire family of villagers, all with... interesting names. In my annoyance, I decided to go back down to my factory and build a proper auto smelter. While the four electric furnaces we already had in the factory worked well enough, I wanted something a bit bigger that you could just dump a bunch of resources into and wait for them to be smelted. So I built this system where you place the items you wanted smelting in the input chest, they are pumped into one of several electric furnaces, and then, when smelted, automatically pumped back out into the output chest, without needing any human interaction. While this worked great, in all honesty, it wasn't the fastest system in the world, and if I wanted it to be better, I would need to redesign the pipes to make them pump the items faster. The bigger problem, though, was that the furnaces were a massive drain on our already struggling power system, with the entire system, including storage, sometimes going down mid-smelting. To fix this, I began brainstorming a way to generate all the power we could ever need. And I do mean all the power. However, that is a project for another week. 
In the meantime, we were going to need a lot more resources. Our current method of using the auto miner in the basement just wasn't efficient enough. And in fact, we had just unplugged the miner the week before to help flatten the herbivore pen and had completely forgotten to plug it back in. Instead, I decided to set up a tunnel miner from Railcraft. This thing, while having a really expensive tunnel bore head attached to it and filled with coal, would drill out a 3x3 area in front of it and place the collected blocks slash ore in minecart chests behind it. It would even place its own tracks and use gravel or sand to traverse the gaps. I set it all up perfectly, but I will admit I may or may not have forgotten to actually add the minecart chests at first. With all this sorted, I decided it was finally time to build the first of our carnivore pens, and I knew I wanted this one to be a jungle themed one. So I spent about an hour getting everything together and made myself a helicopter and flew off to find a jungle. Holy shit, it works, okay. Yes, I'm not really too sure how it works, but it works. Go on the race, I'll get in the car. No! Uh, no, 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 no. I'm much better at flying than I am at driving. Still a worrying thing. Can't even speak about Nope. Um, the game lagged slightly, but I'm fine. I heard a damage noise and it wasn't from me. Yeah, I was flying and then I... Oh, no. <laughs> Great. Um... Martha? Crashed it? No. If you oh. crash it, try and aim to start. Oh, why is that, That's not the problem. What's with the lag? Um, might be the velociraptors. What do you mean the velociraptors? Uh, I mean the literal velociraptors that are, like, aiming towards me. Well, it's lagging my game out, so... Yeah, mine's lagging too, and all I did was go to the jungle. Amazing. No. That's a bad idea. Why is that a bad idea? Because uh, there's packs of velociraptors here. That's fine. I'm right. basically Chris Pratt. Oh, okay. nope, bit of lag. Glitching noise for me. Oh no! Mm, shit! They see me. They see me. Go, 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 go! Oh, that's what you wanted the cactus for. Yes, for the helicopter. After all that, I needed to wait for a bunch of glass to be smelted. So to kill the time, I made a little living room with a TV and a to-do board. Martha would, rightly, point out that this room didn't look like a living room, but instead like a worker break room. Once all the glass was smelted, I headed across the lake and found a nice spot to start building the carno pens. I just needed to cut down a bunch of spruce trees first. The plan for the carnivore pens was to spread them out across several different pens. The front of these would be an outdoor wooden walkway with food vendors where visitors could look in on the dinosaurs doing, well, dino things. The other side would be an indoor building which would have maybe more signs and statues about the dinosaurs and would give a bit of a higher up view on them. The first of these pens would be, as I said, jungle themed, with it containing dilos, compies and orientheos. I think the pen actually turned out pretty decent, with there being a small river running through it, with bridges to cross over and small tunnels for the tiny dinos to run through. While I was building all of this, Martha was completely gutting the top floor of the lab and rebuilding it to actually look like a lab, and it instantly went from being a room that I hated to one of my favourite ones on the server. However, when I was admiring her work, Martha rightly pointed out that I had made a small oversight. The carnivores were going to need a large amount of meat, and we currently lacked the infrastructure to support that. So I came up with probably my darkest Minecraft idea yet, to make a meat factory. But to achieve it, I was going to need some grass. So I made a tiny enchanting room and spent way too long to get an iron shovel with silk touch. 
The location of this meat factory was going to be in the room which used to be for the auto miner, as it was already split into perfectly sized squares that we could keep the animals in. Actually, getting the animals down there though was just so much fun. Come on. I feel like I should have Googled if these actually. Oh, for f I've already lost one. As long as you get two, that's better than none, isn't it? Right, I need you to stay to not move the elevator, Martha. Yeah. Because that's the elevator I'm on about not moving. Oh, you should have clarified. There's quite a few, Josh. Like, I'll be that honest. is true. At this point, there is quite a few. I thought you meant the main one, so... No, no. Ooh, oh my god, that cow is suicidal. As I was getting the animals down, Martha finished converting the entrance of the meat farms into this cool Gracilia lab. The animal killer itself ended up being a pretty intricate design. So underneath the area where the animals lived was a catwalk system with rails that minecarts would run along two different tracks which would go over embarkation of tracks, one grabbing a cow from above and the other grabbing a sheep from above. The animals would then be carried up an elevator track system before throwing them off and into a pit where they would land on a conveyor belt and die. Their items would then get dragged along into the sorter where the meat would be separated from the materials like cowhide. Now, if this lever was flipped and the light turned on, the meat would go into a furnace and be cooked before being placed in a chest that was separate from the uncooked meat. Now that we had the food production sorted, I ran back to the Carno area and decided to build a second pen containing Procmos, Oviraptors and Matches. And with that, it is time that I end this week's instalment. When it comes to the quantity of dinos, this week by far has been the busiest. It is shocking to see just how far the park has come, but then I always remember just how insanely much is left to do. Over the last few weeks, the park has come along nicely, with us finally making substantial progress on both the herbivore pen and beginning to build the first few carno pens. Admittedly though, we were starting to run the risk of losing direction as there was still so much more left to do. So we held a quick strategy meeting. Right, sit down. Why do you have to be awkward? <laughs> okay, so... <sighs> I give up. Right. What are our next few build plans? Walkway. Walkway, after the walkway. What's on the board? We should have had this in the... Have it in the break room. Let's go to the break yep, room. Yep, to the break room. Okay. So. I'm currently working on the Carno area. I'm working on walkway. What are you going to do after the walkway? Path from Doctor Lab? Yeah, I can do. Yeah? We're going to need more gravel, though, and I think the gravel's being used, isn't it? I can sort something out for the gravel. Um, what about farms? I've Not farms, them. museum. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to do that one the last thing, because we're going to need a lot of skeletons, and then we don't have any. Well, we have three, but they're all the same dinosaur. Okay. So not until we've done the dinosaur fight club. Yeah, like once we've done the fight, so we're gonna have enough for the fight. Okay, well, I'll need to work on finishing the Carno area then. Well, do if we just if you just build the path up, we can work on the town, can't we? Hmm. Cool. And then once I'm a bit through the Carno area, I'm gonna leave the Spino zone to you. Or actually, no, I'm gonna leave the Swamp zone to you, and I'm thinking it goes Swamp, Spino zone, and then finally the Water zone. With that decided. We went off in one of the cars to place some dinosaurs that Martha had been working on for a few weeks, the Brachiosaurus, or as we call them, the Longnecks. We already had an area designated for them lodged between the herbivore pen and the lake bordering the lab. Over the last few days, Martha had been steadily planting some prehistoric trees in the region, getting it ready for them. On our way back though, something different happened. Do, do, do. Uh, Martha? Mm -hmm. Is that a mob? Right. Oh, he looks like a dicker. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? 
Okay. Well, whatever. You know what? At least he's going to trade with us. Um, yeah, apparently. Apparently he's going to give us stuff if we let him stay in the lab. So let's find a corner to get him set up in. Yeah, well, tough. Don't really care. Maybe. You know what? Let's just put him here behind all these computers. No, no, no. I use these. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you not trust him to be behind computers? I'm in the bio lab, there's fuck all he can do down there. <laughs> yeah, apart from get all your uh, complete access to our storage system. Yeah, but he can do that upstairs as well, so... Uh, yeah, okay, fair point, fair point. <laughs> we'll work it out. Leaving Martha to help our new guest get settled, I headed on over to the carnivore area and started clearing some space for a third pen. Once the area was cleared, I did actually end up having some trouble in deciding on the exact placement of the pen. But eventually, I found a spot that I liked and began building it. At this point, I was really becoming appreciative of just how easy these smaller pens were to build, because they just required chiselled glass and cobblestone. However, I'm not sure how many more of these smaller pens will be built before we start making things that are a little bit bigger. For the interior, I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different while also finding a way to try and make a dent in the 5.6k worth of dirt in our storage system. What I ended up doing was building this hill using chiselled blocks to create a less steady drop down, while also trying to create some sort of curve on the edges where the grass was slightly higher than in the middle. To give the dinos their water source, I placed a small stream running straight down the middle that went to a tiny pool at the bottom of the hill. While the pen definitely needs a bit more in the way of decoration, that would be a job for another day, as I decided to just jump the gun and place the habitat's denizens, the Dinosaurus. And yeah, I am fully aware that I am butchering that name, but I think at this point it's a bit too late to care, as I have butchered most of the other names as well. With this new Dr. Porkchop turning up, and the villager colony steadily growing, I realised we don't know who we can trust. So I went around to each of the different dino pens and put down CCTV cameras that would allow us to check up on the dinos even from the other end of the park, and also gave us night vision. The only place that I didn't end up placing the CCTV was in the herbivore area, as I haven't decided yet whether I want to use them on the wall, on a tree, or on special posts. But while I was in the area, I decided it was time to start on the boats. As I mentioned a few episodes back, the plan for the herbivore zone has always been to have boats that are automatically going around the river, which visitors can hop on and use as both a way to get a good view of the dinosaurs, and a way to get to the top end of the park without needing to walk. So I quickly dug out an area that I planned to later turn into the south docking bay of the ride, and got myself a map, a boat from the Moor boat mod, a daylight detector, a seat, and a helm. Throwing the map onto the helm of the boat allows me to put waypoints that I want the boat to travel between. The first attempt at this worked pretty well, in fact, why don't you have a look for yourself? So it does work, mostly. Either way, I just need to be more precise in where the waypoints go. That way it should, in theory, sort of smooth out the ride. But I'll have to have a play with it next week. You see, I have bigger problems at the moment. Currently, there's a lot of stuff that I want to put in the park that I simply cannot do. Because we just are not generating enough power. The prime example of this is the sliding gates I want to add to some of the bigger pens for ease of access. The system is already struggling with it often just turning off, especially at night, so I want to build a nuclear reactor on the island to power the entire theme park. Obviously, this is far easier said than done, with it needing a large investment of both time and resources. I've actually been preparing for this for a few weeks now, stockpiling the raw resources we will need. I haven't gone around to processing them into usable materials yet, mainly because I've been debating where to actually put said reactor. Now though, I have finally decided to build it underground, not too far from the underground service tunnel. Last episode, I had set up the tunnel miner, and the advantage of it placing its own track is that it has created a mini train line for me. 
Now, I decided to build the entrance to the reactor along this train track at its first left turn. The logic being that if something did go wrong with the reactor, I want to be able to get as close to it as possible before it blows up. Of course, I could always just build the reactor right under the base, but Martha made it clear she wasn't too happy about the idea, just in case something did go wrong. Of course, if the reactor did actually go critical, it would probably take the entire park, hell, possibly the entire island with it. But I didn't mention that part. So at the new train station I built, I dug out an elevator shaft going all the way down to Y level 10, before placing down our miner and leaving it to clear out a decent enough space for me to work with. Meanwhile I was waiting for this, I went back over to the lab and checked to see what dino eggs we had ready to go for the herbivore zone. After grabbing a few eggs, I ran over to the herbivore zone and placed down a few lephosauruses and some platyosauruses. Really at this point, it's more about just adding life to the herbivore zone through more dinosaurs. But this made me think it might be a good idea to recap where the park actually is at the moment build-wise, and what dinos are currently inside it. First off, we have the laboratory, which currently houses our small villager colony, and our new Dr. Porkchop. Dinosaur-wise, we have four current pens, all of which are meant for either dinosaur testing or temporary housing until they get bigger. One is filled with Procmos, another with Monkeyus, while the other two currently remain empty. Underneath the base is a surface corridor which houses a variety of technical builds like the factory and the animal food farm. The herbivore pen is currently split into two sections, the first of which contains the long neck pen where the brachies are housed, and the other is the river boat ride with a bunch of different herbivores on it. Above this ride is a wooden walkway where Martha is planning to build a variety of buildings like restaurants and shops. On the other end of the park, we have the carnivore area, where there are currently three different pens. The newest of these pens is the one I built this week, containing the Dimesons. One of the other pens contains Compies, Dilos and Orinthios, while the final pen contains Procomos, Matches and Oviraptors. So, I knew from the offset of week 6 that I 100% wanted to place down some raptors in the carnivore area. However, to do that I also knew I was going to need to increase our power output, because the park was just struggling way too much with its current output. So I went back and continued to build the reactor, finally fully installing the reactor itself. Now, this is obviously off-centre, but that's on purpose because I am planning to reinstall it a bit to the side later on, and add a second reactor. I'm also dancing around with the idea of maybe having upwards of four different nuclear reactors. With it placed, the one major thing that is missing for it is the fuel. As I said before, I had almost all of the resources for it ready in the storage system, but I needed to process it, and to do that, I needed advanced alloys, and also a thermal centrifuge. But to build the thermal centrifuge, I needed a mining laser, so I ended up adding three of them. One for the thermal centrifuge, and one each for me and Martha. Honestly, I had been wanting to build these for a while, but they were on the ever-growing list of things I would get to, uh, eventually. They just speed up mining so quickly by allowing you to destroy such a large area in a matter of seconds, which, considering just how many of our utility builds are underground, makes the laser a game changer for us. With the thermal centrifuge built, I could finally process all of the uranium ore we had been collecting into actually useful radioactive uranium. So radioactive, in fact, that you needed a hazmat suit just to pick it up without getting radiation poisoning, and a containment box just to have it in your inventory without the suit. Martha, though, was really not a fan of the hazmat suit. This time around, I am feeling like I might actually have to teach you how the reactor works. Aww. There's a lot that could go wrong with it. You look ridiculous. Oh, uh, what, what do you mean? I think it's an amazing outfit, especially my backpack. Someone did not put any time on that. Nope. You, well, you know the mod is very, very old. Um, where are you? I want to do a little experiment. 
is a shady merchant. Yeah, I've noticed him. Have you seen his trade? I can't show you this. Okay, well, his trade is eight emeralds for one emerald block. Ah, that, that makes sense. Oh, so you don't get your, uh, radiation poisoning. What about, what about if you pick it up? <laughs> come here, you just want a little bit of radiation poisoning. No, I'm alright. No, come on, come on, come on. It won't kill you. Oh yeah, I forgot about all your NPC names. After trying to slightly poison Martha, I finally managed to build a quad fuel rod. Now I could just stick this into the reactor, and it would probably end up going boom in, well, probably a matter of minutes. In the end, I followed a design I found online, and used four overclocked heat vents and two component heat vents. In all honesty, these would throttle the maximum power output of the reactor by a significant amount, which is why, over the course of the week, I would continually add more fuel rods to the reactor. The trade-off for this, though, is that the reactor would be theoretically meltdown-proof. Of course, if someone was to mess with the reactor, or accidentally move one of the heat vents, it would eventually go boom. And it's a good job, too, otherwise this could happen. Anyway, with that working, I finally have the power output to start putting in some more moving gates on the pens. I would end up using a bit of a more updated design than the ones in the tunnel. See, those ones required two levers to operate, which could sometimes be a bit confusing and made closing the gates from the other side a bit of a hassle. So I got rid of the levers completely and instead set up a one button system where you only had to press it once to open or close the gate. This made the time to build each gate a fair bit longer, but you know what? For the convenience of use, it was 100% worth it. I would also end up going back to my factory and finishing the smelter room, fully installing all of the smelters and pipes before going back through and sprucing the room up to make it look a bit better. To celebrate finishing it, I went and threw our entire ore stockpile into the smelter, and it was beautiful. Finishing the smelter got me in a decorating mood, so I went back to the reactor and started to make it look just that little bit nicer. For safety reasons, I put a bunch of reinforced glass in the control room, so you can still watch the reactor without having to go inside and be somewhat safe. The key word there being somewhat. For the inside of the reactor, I probably could have used reinforced stone, which would help to protect from any reactor meltdown, but that would take a very long time to build, and so many resources that I decided I would leave it for now. Maybe at some point I would go back and place reinforced stone behind the walls, but for now, this design will do. I also found these really cool giant fans, but unfortunately they're based off coordinate positioning, so they sometimes ended up being slightly off, so I couldn't actually place them everywhere I wanted to. I still need to do the roof, but you know what, for now, it will do, since I decided it would be better to make the reactor Martha proof instead, because I don't want her to accidentally set the reactor off. I already knew exactly what I wanted, so I created these laser doors that would require a special level 5 keycard to deactivate. Initially, these lasers were a bit dodgy, sometimes flickering on and off because it was just straight up wasting power. But once I realised this, I rewired the system so that it was just creating a loop of itself. While I had been underground building, Martha had made it clear that she was getting annoyed with how long it took to go from the herbivore zone to the lab. A trip she was making so many times by car because the storage system did not yet reach to her zone. Now that I finally had a nuke, I was in a much more charitable mood, so I decided I would help her out. I ended up getting a network relay system that would digitally transfer items from the storage system to the area that Martha was working in. Now it turns out this was a fair bit cheaper to build than I thought it was, and I probably could have built this around two weeks ago. But after careful consideration, I decided not to tell that to Martha. 
Now that Martha was all sorted, I finally was free to build us the raptor pen. As with all of the other carnivore pens, I had some trouble deciding on an exact shape and placement of the pen, but I knew from the beginning I wanted it to be a pit where you viewed the raptors from a pie. To help me dig out this pit, I finally got to fully unleash the power of lasers. Honestly, this could have taken so many hours otherwise, especially since the pit would be five deep to try and prevent the raptors from escaping. For a water source, I put a small crescent-shaped pool down, but I also dug out a small indoor paddock where the raptors could sleep at night. But I wanted the floor to be hay, and because all of our wheat was currently tied up in the meat factory, I made a quick detour to build a wheat farm. Not exactly the most efficient design or the biggest farm ever, but it worked, and it could be stacked vertically all the way down to bedrock, so I was happy. With the hay paddock done, I went underground to build a fun way of feeding the raptors. A mob launcher. It was basically just a slime block mob launcher that would throw a goat out from underground into the raptor pen where it could be eaten. I did have some difficulties getting the mobs down into the pit at first, but eventually I sorted it, and to load the launcher, I used a very similar system to the Animal Factory, where a minecart would pick them up, then drop the goats inside of the launcher. The initial loading design was a bit rugged and required you to flip the trapdoor lever after the mobs were launched, so I would end up building an upgraded design, where from inside a control room, the entire launcher was wired up to a single button that would just launch the mob out and close the trapdoor itself. This control room also had some trapdoors itself, so you could shoot tranquilizers at the raptors if you needed to go into the pen without being instantly eaten. I also built a smaller control room behind the sleeping area as well, which had a button wired to a gate that would lock the sleeping area off, so that if you needed to go and do some cleaning or building in the pen itself, you could do so. To get the raptors into the sleeping area, I added some dispensers filled with meat. Well, all of that was fun. You know what's not fun though? Building the exact same pen right next to it, especially since I had to dig out a corner of a mountain. Now, why did I do this? Because it wasn't just the Velociraptors I wanted to have in a pen, but also the Atrociraptors. Now, before anyone says something about the accuracy of the raptors, yeah, I know. There's actually four types of raptors in the mod. Velociraptors, Atrociraptors, Oviraptors, which we already have, and Microraptors, which we have plans for. Anyway, I went back to the lab and got us the eggs ready. The plan was to have three male Velociraptors and three female Atrociraptors. We couldn't mix the two species in a single pen, because they would just fight each other. While I waited for the eggs to be incubated, I messed around with some of the villager trades and got absolutely screwed with these fake emerald blocks. Yeah, I don't know why I thought a shady merchant would give me something good. But anyway, I went back and placed both species of raptors and immediately noticed that for each species, one of the raptors was a bit bigger than the others. It was at this point I realised just how useful the middle control room was as I could quickly get from pen to pen. While building the raptor pen, I did realise that Martha somewhat had a point about how long it took to get back to the lab. We did have the helicopter, but honestly that could be a bit awkward to fly for what is, in all reality, a relatively short distance, just made complicated by the lakes. We also wanted something that could transport us with little input from ourselves, unlike the cars. I already had a plan to help with this issue. So as part of my plan, I reset the tunnel bore to go towards the carnivore zone. Meanwhile I waited for this to be done, I went back to my factory and decided to redo it to make it actually look nice. I also used this chance to get rid of some of the andesite out of the system. I think this updated design is actually really smooth and so much cleaner. I like how it turned out, and I used these special lanterns to light up almost the entire room. I also left some room for expansion, so that later on I could add a room to store power or whatever else I wanted. I also quickly went back and had another play around with the boats. I finally got it to do a path that was a bit better, 
But when I added the other boats to the chain, it became a bit janky. I decided I would have a better look at it next week. But for now, it works. While I was there, I thought I'd have a look at how progress was going on Martha's herbivore walkway. She had built this pretty nice bar and fast food hut, as well as the north boarding dock for the boat ride. After a few hours, I finally had the tracks from the tunnel wall properly installed, and decided to hop on it and have a go. My next project for the tunnel would be to add a proper train system that would allow for fast-paced travel between the different zones. At this point, the pathways are already there between the zones, since they had been drilled out by the train miner. However, they were still just the basic Minecraft tracks, which, in all honesty, aren't really very fast. So I plan to change that by swapping them out for electric tracks, which would be able to power the trains themselves and would offer a far faster rate of travel than the standard Minecraft ones. Making these modded tracks though is an insanely slow process, since with the basic track roller you have to stay in the menu and manually roll them yourself, which is a colossal investment of time. Luckily, there is the metal roller which can do it automatically, but it needs brass plates to be built. I thought that this would be insanely easy, but what I never realised was that you can't just hammer the brass into plates like you can with other metals but instead need to make a specialist machine. Remember when I said I left room for expansion when I did up the factory? Well, it is time to use that. I built a small corridor leading into another decently sized room, which kept the same design as the previous one, while still having potential areas that could be used for expansion. Something pretty funny is that I spent admittedly way too long trying to figure out why this pressing machine wasn't being made, Turns out that I had just built it wrong, but I was so convinced that I had built it correctly, I just never noticed. The other problem I had is that the immersive engineering mod primarily uses its own energy source, which is transferred using literal wires as opposed to cables like our other tech mods. Luckily, there was a heat transference machine, which required a warm and a cold block to generate power. For the cold block, I just went and grabbed some snowballs and compressed them into ice. Then, when the ice almost immediately melted, I got some packed ice instead. For the hot block, I used a small block of uranium. After all, what's a small amount of radiation poisoning between friends? Once I got the metal roller built, I realised my next problem. I needed a bunch of blaze powder, so it was time to go on a blaze hunt. I did this until my sword broke, then I just made a new diamond one and built a track replacer and an electric locomotive. I was so excited to get these trains running that I just placed the electric train down and linked it to the track replacer and sent them on their way. Then I immediately realised the problem. The electric tracks which would power the train were not already placed, so the electric train kept running out of power. Now, Looking back, I could probably have just put the train at the back, but I didn't think of that at the time. So instead, I pushed the track replacer personally, which took so much time and cost me so many crowbars. At least it was an excuse just to make a far superior steel crowbar. Once all that was done, I realised that it was pointless because I needed to put shunting wires under all of the electric tracks or it wouldn't work. When I say I spent multiple days working on this, I mean it. I swear I almost went insane doing it. But you know what? When it was done, it was totally worth it, just being able to travel between zones so much quicker than before. While I had been doing all this though, Martha had been sprucing up the base a fair bit. First off, she built the security office up at the herbivore zone, inside which we have Judgmental Pumpkin, who will be watching the CCTV systems at some point. And behind the desk, I moved to this archer villager. Back at the lab, she built the helipad, so we finally had a designated place to land the helicopter instead of just in the field. She also put down some nice cosmetic stuff like this path and some plants, as well as an actual place for us to park our cars. Right, so what's the actual plan for the Galaminius? Sorry, walkways up? Yeah, to the, from the dock to the... Oh, okay, I thought you meant to the herbivore pen. 
No, no, no. I was going to say, that's a substantial distance. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you were Yeah, that makes, that makes more sense, yeah. Yeah, and then it's going to have the little, like, wooded... Uh... Area, but it doesn't go into the wooded area, right? No, 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 I mean, it's going to have, like, a little, um, like, wood little shack hotel thingy in the back. A little uh, pod. Cool, so that will be one of the three hotels we'll have. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll just need to do the path then first, and then we can work out the border out of dirt. Yeah. Replace it with wire and go from there. Hmm. Perfect, right. Let's go and work out this path. But yeah, you see where that pillar is? No. Yeah. That's where the dock ends. Okay. So the path is going to be starting from there. And I'm assuming it's just a straight up, straight path. Uh, sort of. It's a bit a little windy looking, but it's more or less going to be straight. Okay. Like nature sort of thing, you know. The solid straight brick path, just. Yep, and then I'm thinking about here is where it ends to the town. Mm -hmm. So basically from here to there, maybe, you know what, maybe a bit more like here, and this be the entrance to the town. Perfect. Uh, we will work with that then. And then obviously the town can have a more windy path as well. Seeing what Martha had built and having a quick meeting about what we were going to do next got me a bit restless to go out and build another pen while I waited for the resources to be gathered. So I went back to the Carno area and decided it was time to build another multiple dino pen. See, I have this word document filled with all the Carnos in the mod and which ones can actually coexist with the others without starting a mass brawl every five seconds. So for this pen, I plan to put in five different breeds of dinosaur, meaning it needed a fair amount of space for them to all walk around in. I decided for this one, I was going to keep the interior terrain more or less how it already was, because with the walls, it actually did look decent enough. I also added this small cave with a gravel floor, because, well... I thought it would be cool. That's the only real reason that I have. With that built, I jumped straight into building the Galaminius pen. While I was getting all the iron together to make the fence base, I met Terry for the first time. No idea where he came from, but I'm assuming Martha put him there. After being very confused, I started placing all of the fence bases. Now, because Galaminius aren't exactly the deadliest of dinosaurs, I decided there was no point whatsoever in electrifying the fences. After all, what's the chances they are going to kill anyone? Once I put the bases down, I put the fence posts in as well. And then it was time for the overly repetitive task of placing down the wires. Honestly, the wand was a massive help in speeding up this process. A quick gate installation later, and it was time to put down the Galaminius. While I was at it, I went back to the carnivore zone, and in the new pen placed down three Ashulorators, two Barrys, five Guangs, two Heras, and two Metaraxes. Once again, yes, I know I messed up all of those names. Once the dinos were placed, I jumped around the back of the carno pens and started to build the back rooms of it. For the lower level, I built this maintenance area that has access to all of the pens, and access to the raptor control rooms. Above this, I built a much nicer indoor walkway. This walkway will have signs saying what dinosaurs you are looking at, and maybe a bit more information about them. My next project starts off with building a cross section next to the raptor zone. I leave in the middle room for an elevator which will go down to a corridor leading to what will be part of the aquatic dino zone. There is also room for a pathway back outside the indoor area, exiting you right next to the raptor pens. The door opposite the entrance, though, is locked by a keycard reader. You see, behind this door will be the entrance to an exclusive restaurant that only the richest of the rich can eat at. Those few VIP guests will be given a special keycard that can be used to open this door. 
The plan has always been to have four restaurants in the theme park. One in the herbivore zone, which Martha will build. One in the underwater zone. And two in the carno zone. Out of the four restaurants, this one will be the most unique. Not just because it is an exclusive restaurant, but because it has a unique twist, which will become clear in due time. Coming out of the keycard locked door, you are greeted with the lobby to the restaurant, where guests will be checked to make sure they genuinely are on the guest list. After all, this restaurant prides itself on discretion. Once tickets are sorted, guests then take the elevator down to Y level 41, where the real restaurant is. Now, I'm going to be honest here, this took me well over 11 hours to build. Maybe it was a bit of an overinvestment in time, but I still think after having built this thing, it was completely worth it. The first stage of construction was mining out a sloped seating area, ringing around a central pit. See if you can guess what will be in the centre, and how that plays into the theme of the restaurant. After a few hours of building, I realised this was taking forever, so I ran back to the base and grabbed one of my favourite utility blocks, the Buildcraft Quarry. Leaving that to run overnight, I came back on just a few times to move its position. After many hours later of building, I managed to finish the walls and the roof. Time to start on the marble floor and the seating areas. This had already taken so long that I had extended the storage system over to the area, just so that I didn't have to run back to the laboratory to get more resources. This was also by far my biggest build on the park yet, with it requiring so many hours and thousands of blocks to build, and it wasn't even the maximum size I wanted it to be. Originally, I wanted the roof to be far taller, but eventually found out that if I built it as high as I wanted to, it would pop out of the ground above. After the marble floors were done, it was time to build the pit in the middle, and also time for me to reveal the point of the restaurant, a dinosaur fight club. These high-paying visitors can come and bet on which dinosaurs they think will win the fight. The winners live to fight another day, and the losers, well, the losers get turned into that night's dinner. Down in the pit, we have two side chambers, one on each side with totally normal walls that seal them up. I still need to build all of the administration chambers, and room for the winning dinos to be stored. And of course, the kitchens. But that's something I will do next week. For now, I put down some dinosaurs which will battle it out at the end of this week's episode. But which dinos they are, I'll leave it as a surprise. I also built this little control room where you can open the doors and lower the middle wall from. With all that sorted, I headed back to the indoor carno area and began to place down paddock signs for each of the dinos. I'm planning to place skeletons or something more here at some point, but I'll leave that to Martha to make. Meanwhile I was over there, I thought, you know what, I might as well make another dinosaur pen. This time with an ice theme. To get said ice, I headed back on over to the mountain and started to shovel up snow, which I then turned into snow blocks, compressed into ice and then into packed ice. With the ice, I then built this admittedly rather small pen, but I think it came out great. For the dinosaurs inside of it, I made two enos. Now, yeah, this isn't exactly their preferred habitat, but they are the closest to the saber tooth this mod has. These also happen to be the first dinos I have made that use the cultivator instead of the incubator. One quick train journey later, and it's time to place down the enos in their new habitat and they are possibly the cutest baby dinos yet. While I was building the fight club, I realised it would be useful if I had a little friend to help out. So after a bit of processing high level materials, I ended up with everything I needed to build a little robot. Apart from just being a super cute little robot, it is also a moving anvil, chest, furnace, and a crafting grid. The best part is that it's technically unkillable, since if it gets taken down, it just teleports back to its charge pad, which acts as its home. At this point, my project of a restaurant had grown the attention of Martha, who I hadn't told about it as I wanted it to be a surprise, 
but she had noticed a large amount of our resources had disappeared. So it was finally time to show her what he had done, and Martha had a surprise for me too. Basement. We're going straight to the factory. What have we done to Kevin? Kevin? Terry, you mean? Terry. <laughs> yeah. Remember the names of your pets? <laughs> the name was Kevin. Oh, it's Robin. Yep. Why is it? Why is it not called Robin? Because they. Right, Martha, come here. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to break the news to you. They were never called Robin. They were always called Robert. Like Robin that. is a name you no, made no. up for it. No. <laughs> Do you remember when we played Halo and you called all the warthogs Rory? <laughs> it's the same thing. No, it was always wrong. You're lying, it's what's I'll see if I can change its name. But yeah, come through here. <laughs> a little bit of radiation. I've seen this, i got stuff on it. <clears throat> it's quite cool. Uh, come with me, I'm going to take you to the next thing. Time for the train. I, to be honest, Martha, I think you've broken it. Oh. I don't know how you've done it. It's been working perfectly, and in the second you touch it... Like anything tech, as soon as I no, 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 just uh, get off the track. There we go, hop in the su seat. You in? Yep. Let's go. Oh yeah, if, I'm, if this hits a mob, it will blow up, by the way. Alright. Also, I died about six times trying to fix your miner the other day. Yeah, it's gone into some really weird tunnels. Yeah. I was trying to fix the ground, but it kept going. Don't, don't open the map. Don't click J. Oh my god, I didn't realise it looks like that. Have you made a swastika? Oh my god, no, no, no. It's just very cool looking. Right. I, I slowed it down. Hop out. I'll turn that off. Jungle screaming, that I'm hearing. <laughs> okay. So, obviously there's this pen with its cave. Oh, very... Yeah, I know. I'm gonna find a way to separate them. Um And then through here is our newest pen. Where's the other one gone? Um there was two of them. There's now just half of one. Yeah, I'm assuming the other one drowned. These mobs really do love their water. It could it could be hidden against the wall, but who knows. Right, it's time to show you the thing that I spent over 11 hours on. I also have got signs. Welcome. So, before you do anything, this pathway here and down here, this pathway here will be an exit to the water zone. This will be an elevator down to the underwater walkway through the water zone. Okay. Through here, this will be a locked door that you need a level 5 key card, so you need a VIP key card to get into. You come down here, there will be a security officer here. Come into the elevator. Down we go. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have a look. Oh, for fuck's sake. How Welcome. Holy shit. Gets better. Uh, go, go, come in, uh, just stand here for a bit. Just look into the pit. Have you thought about handrails? Uh, no, not really. So we got this. This is to separate the dinos. I've either lagged or that's stopped. Yeah, it has that's stopped. stopped. Okay. okay, now stare to your left at the left wall. In the pit. Okay. That's... <laughs> yep. Sorry. This is going to be Dinosaur Fight Club restaurant. Behind... Oh, you need... Do you need Indesite as well? No, I just need the marble. We are sort of uh, out of marble. Nearly out of cobble as well. Yeah, I use quite a bit. Um, I'm just a bit surprised more than anything. I didn't think I'd get through it. Huh? I'm surprised you didn't get through 
surprised you've done the roof. Well, I was going to do the roof higher, but then A, I got bored. B, I was running out of cobblestone to build with. Uh, like, to build supports, to build it. And then C, I realised it was going to pop through the floor. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. If the roof went up by, like, another five blocks, it would pop out through the floor, so... Uh. Martha. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> While Martha went off to redesign the Galaminius pen, I went back to the carnival area to build both the roof of the interior area and also yet another pen. This time for the Alva and the Terror Bird. Now, the big mistake that I made with this pen was that I made it out of jungle leaves, which normally would not be a problem whatsoever if it wasn't for the fact that the alpha was actually not a carnivore, but a herbivore. So when it was placed, it just immediately began to eat up the leaves on the ground, destroying the pen. So, one quick mass murder later, and everything was how it should be. After the pen was built, I finally had to accept I had used up the vast majority of our resources these past few weeks, and that our usage rate of resources was far surpassing our production rate. To fix this, it was now time to go over the top of the digital miner from the mechanism mod. Now, when it came to our options for automatic miners in this mod, this thing was truly the most advanced, far more so than the buildcraft quarry or the railcraft mining bore we had used previously. It also required a lot more in the way of resources and power to run, but luckily we had a nuclear reactor, and just enough mechanism materials left to build it. It did take a bit of time to set up properly, since if the right settings aren't used, the miner will just destroy everything in a large radius. Initially, I set it up wrong, but luckily I realised immediately, and a quick fix later, the miner went to work gathering us a bunch of ore and marble at an unmatched rate. Martha will be very happy with that iron production. While that was left to run, I completed working on the outdoor walkway of the Carno Zone, even having the staircase up built. At some point, I am going to have to add some tiny shops and a few fast food stalls along with it. But you know what? I think it's just about time we go to the Fight Club and have its grand opening battle. Welcome to the first Dinosaur Fight Club battle! In the first corner, we have five Velociraptors, and in the second corner, we have five Atrociraptors. Who will win this battle? Make your bets now. It would appear the Velociraptors are starting out strong, but the Atrociraptors are pulling their weight. Could this be a comeback we are seeing? <laughs> Well, it would appear the Velociraptors have well and truly won this, with a 5-2 victory. For the first time since I started on it about six weeks ago, the Carnivore Zone is actually starting to come towards being completed, with only a handful of pens left to build. I decided to start off the week strong by building a pretty big and cool pen with a variety of different dinosaurs. As with all the other pens, I started by cutting down a bunch of trees, and making a rough design on where I want the pen to be positioned. At this point, I had cut down so many trees that this part of the island could hardly be called a forest anymore. I do plan to at some point come back through and place down a bunch more trees. After beginning to build the pen, I decided I wanted to have two different biomes in it. So I came up with this design where the top section of the pen is a small jungle with vines hanging down, and the bottom half is a beach. The vines ironically ended up causing a few more problems later on, since it turns out the dinosaurs can climb them, and while they never escaped, some did come far too close to the border for comfort. 
While I was building this, Martha was off in the Galaminius pen, building a bunch of small cabins that form part of the Woodland themed hotel, where you can sleep in these cabins in the dinosaur area. The front entrance for it currently has this big parasaur skeleton on top of it, but the plan is to eventually swap this out for a Galaminius skeleton. Later on, we would go over and add a few other herbivores in the area, just to increase the dinosaur counts. Jumping back to my ever-growing factory, I decided it was time to do something to increase our ore production even further. Don't get me wrong, the digital miner was producing ore at a simply incredible rate. But I knew we could be doubling it, so I designed this system where any ore collected from the miner is pumped out of the chests onto a conveyor belt system, where they are then dropped into this immersive engineering crusher that smashes the ore up before that ore is pushed away into a smelter system. You can actually watch this crusher from up above through a glass floor. The furnace system itself is completely separate from our pre-existing smelter system, but this one is dedicated just for ore. Now, to be honest, this entire system is not exactly the fastest whatsoever, however it does double the ore so I'm not complaining. To speed up the process, I could always swap the smelters out for an arc furnace which could smelt dozens of ore at once, however this is 100% a build for another day. Little did I know that while I was doing tech stuff, Martha was finding a solution to our villager population problem. The problem was that we had so many villagers but nowhere to really house them, so we were just leaving them in the laboratory, and it was starting to become really crowded. Hello! I have carrots now because we're running out of eggs. <laughs> I can't believe we're running out of eggs. I know. We'll have to increase our egg farm again. I know. So you come across the incinerator. Yeah, because they've got to revive them. If they misbehave, that's where they're going. Uh... <laughs> oh, bloody hell, Martha! <laughs> So I've also just spotted a block I've missed, so have a have a nice explore. Um, so I can't build over the other side because of the water, but I've done a nice little seating area to remind them that there's nothing out there and they can't escape. Oh, is this their television? Yeah, essentially. They can look so out into the... I can't really look out because I've picked the bars where you, it's really hard to see out, so... <laughs> and if you go down the stairs... It also tells them they can't mine through the wall to escape. Exactly. This is kind of like a, a sitting area for them with some more... Are they actually wandering about? No, I've made them stay now. Like, I, I just put them on wonders so they sort of go away from each other. Yeah, I um, like it. Yeah, they're all rooms with a bunk bed, and uh, each set of bunk bed only has one chest, so they have to fight over it. Um, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come through here at some point and set all of these to their homes. So they actually right. come here at night. And then we're going to have them walking around in the day, but they'll still come here at night. This would actually inspire me to create a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Have you made a gun? No. I mean, it clearly says pew pew. No, it doesn't. I think you're imagining yeah. stuff. This is something I've wanted to build for a while, but I've never got around to it because I'd have to use mechanism. But then I found that another mod has an even better version. Okay, is it a tank? No. This is to stop the villagers if they get out of hand. I want you to just imagine using you made a this. Launcher. Huh? You made a grenade launcher. No, but just imagine using this inside the lab in the uh, prison. Is it a flamethrower? Please tell me it's a flamethrower. I can't. What is that? That looks like a flamethrower. It is a flamethrower. Now. Put the tree, Josh. Hang on. Put the tree out. It's not working! Here we go. Fire extinguisher as well. Yep. Can you use it? I've come prepared! Fuck's sake. That was my favourite tree as well, Josh. Yeah, we can build it off yeah. the doorway I've put down there. So Martha, good. we've got a fire extinguisher. To celebrate finally having a flamethrower, I built a bedroom for myself and left room for Martha to build her own opposite. Both of these rooms have a large sliding door and a doorbell, because why not? Inside my room you can come into an entryway with a table, a button to control the door, two armour stands and a charging pad to replenish your batteries. This living room comes into a library with a television, a table and a staircase leading to the top floor where we find the master bedroom and the bathroom, which even has a fully working mirror. 
There's also this fish tank, which at some point I will add some fish inside of. So show me your room and I'll wire it up. This is my room. Very... Martha? Yeah? You're aware we're going to need to put a wall here on either side, right? Yeah. Okay, I cool. I didn't know what you wanted to do. Oh, okay, cool. Let's continue. This is the actual wall. Sorry, where did you get this armour? I might have nicked out the system. Um, what? What even armour is it? Steel. Oh. Doesn't have any trousers or shoes, but go in, go in there. Oh, I'm liking this. Hang on. <laughs> Actually, before we go in there, come with me. Yep. Let's, let's oh, thank you. Okay. Go in there. Right. Ooh. Of course, I was wondering where the dodos. <laughs> we'll get some proper dodos as well at some point. Um, in the it museum. Seems like my army of dodos is going to start, Josh. I thought I was the one who made armies of dodos. After Martha showed me her room, I went back towards the Galaminius pen and built this information hub with this unique roof. At some point, I'm going to add maps of the park on the wall, and also have an NPC who will give out maps of the park. There will also be an NPC who can give you information about different parts of the park, such as what the restaurants are, etc. In the background while preparing this, I was secretly preparing a dinosaur he had long been looking forward to having in the park. The Tyrannosaurus Rex. This pen ended up having this cave. Now, admittedly, it was far too small for the T-Rex, and in later weeks I will have to go back to rebuild the cave. This isn't the only occasion I underestimated the size of the T-Rex. When I would place them down, they would actually end up growing to be the exact same height as the pen wall. I'm going to have to either climb into that pit and lower the floor by a few blocks, or just add a safety fence. Also, funny story, when I first placed the T-Rexes, there were two of them, and they both grew to adulthood. However, after a while, the smaller T-Rex disappeared. My only assumption to what happened is that it was eaten by its older brother. Martha was also off, building another herbivore pen. The exact plan for this pen plays into an idea we developed, which we will build in weeks to come. But for now, I won't reveal what it is. In this pen, she has put a bunch of new herbivores we didn't have before, such as these awesome long necks, which were a bit too big for the pen, so we moved them into the bratchy enclosure instead, which would then become just the long neck pen. Martha also wanted to put some dinosaur plants in here, and get enough to put them in all of our different pens. To get enough of the plants, Martha transformed our biolab into a prehistoric plant factory. Admittedly, she went a bit mad becoming absolutely obsessed with producing them and finishing this little beach tower, which serves as both a lifeguard hut and a check-in desk for the Galaminius Hotel. Deciding it had been far too long since we got a new vehicle, I built yet another car. This one being a carrier. Unfortunately, this carrier ended up being a lot smaller than I imagined. So once I built it and installed an engine, I just parked it up at the herbivore car park and sort of forgot about it. It was even a lot slower than I thought it would be. But to be fair, it may have just been because of the engine I installed. With Martha's plant obsession going overboard, we both went and built some grassy areas with me building this little grassy cut through in the carnival zone, and Martha building this herbivore picnic area that overlooked the river next to the long neck pen. Not being content to stop there, Martha also went overboard and built this swamp themed pen in the carnival zone. Martha building the swamp pen saw an end of an era for me. Back in week 3 when I started building the carnival area, I was just living out of these four double chests and crafting table. But now it is time to move them, and by the end of the 10th week on the server I had moved the contents of the chests into our storage system. When Martha had finished building the pen, I quickly made a trip back to the laboratory to create some sushi and dinosaur crocodile eggs before placing them in the pen. With that sorted, I only really had a few builds left. The first one that I wanted to get out of the way was the restaurant build. For it, I built this two-floor semicircle with a pouncing raptor skeleton in the middle. For the name, I didn't really know what I wanted it to be, but I knew it should be something raptor related. Maybe raptor house or something? I tried to design this sort of like book stand for waiters to book people in. To make it, I used chisel and bits, and while I don't think it turned out too great, I do think it serves its purpose. 
I did actually at one point have to rebuild a large part of the room because I stupidly made one side way too short. The kitchen has this nice little curtain where the cooks can just shut it if they want to pretend they don't exist so everyone else leaves them alone. The kitchen leads into this super small pen that has a window connected to it, allowing the customers to view in. At some point, I plan on putting some small compies or procmos in there just to add a bit more of life to the carnival restaurant. Once the restaurant was finished, I sat down with Martha and we designed a new plan for the park so that as we began building our third zone, we would actually know what is going on with the rest of the park. This is especially handy for Martha, because she had made it her goal to build a road and path system all around the park, and this dramatically helps her plan out the roads, so she doesn't end up building through any future pens. Martha also went on a bit of a building mayhem, running around the park building a bunch of stuff, First off, she built the beach of this little ice cream truck. While in that area, she also started work on the dock where visitors will arrive via boat. The plan is that when you spawn there, you are on a docked boat and you can come off the boat to start exploring. She also went to build the car park for the carnival zone, which is by far the biggest car park in our build. She also went and built her own restaurant in the herbivore zone that has this giant window letting you view a large sprawling cave. As Martha was building all this, I was building our Spinosaurus pen. Apart from being one of the furthest builds in the zone, it also serves as a bit of a connection between the carnivore zone and the future aquatic zone. Hilariously, the Spinosauruses are so big that even their newly hatched babies are more or less the size of a player. When I finished the pen, I was left with a decent sized space in the middle of the walkway. So to fill it, I built this little food hut that serves small procmo legs and also tacos, where all the meat is from dinosaurs. I am at some point going to go around and build a bunch more huts around the park, each serving different types of food, just so visitors have more options. As I've mentioned, the next zone is going to be the aquatic zone, where all of our water dinosaurs will be. A key part in helping us to build this is going to be the boats that can speed up the process of traversing the area, and also the other large lakes that make up this park. This middle lake I used as an experiment by building this water house hut, where we can store the two boats I built. The first one is a dinghy that I simply can't work out how to get the engine started for. The other one is this river boat that has the Jurassic Park symbol on the side of it. Now, this one I can get the engine to start, but I somehow can't make it turn. I'm sure there's a way to get both of these working, but I'm going to have to do some experimentation first. For now, I'm happy to leave them inside their dock. Martha would end her building rampage by building this hut on the far side of the long neck pen, which would serve as the boarding bay for a new attraction. See, the mod has the ability to put cars along guided tracks, just like in the film. So I went through the longer neck pen and placed down all these tracks for it. It's not exactly the most exciting build we've done, but I think it looks really cool, and honestly, I just love it. With that done, I only had one thing left to really build for week 10. That was something I had been wanting to build for a long time, the Giga Pen. The location for this will be wedged between the T-Rex and the Spinosaurus enclosures. Size-wise, this was going to be one of the largest pens yet, far bigger than the T-Rex due to just how massive the Giga is. Eventually, I got the pen ready, but before I could place the Giga, Martha had her own problems related to one. I do bring with me a gift. The nuke? No, <laughs> I, I, I think a nuke might be a bit overkill. Just a small one? No, normally that's me who's requesting it. Right, I well, mean, I, if it wasn't, it'd be... Up. North, come on, you are. come in. I see you. Right, come to me. Where's this T-Rex? Or oh, fucking Giga or whatever it is. Yeah, where's this Giga? Oh my god, that's where it is, okay. Okay, I think you've lagged for me. Oh, no, yeah. Martha, I'm behind you. Yeah, come back. You come back, Martha. Come back. What are you doing? I'm behind you. You've got a rocket launcher. Why that? A gun. Yeah, that is 100% a giga. Um, we really yeah, should have brought. We really well. should have brought a tranquilizer, but. Well, it's too late. Shoot. I don't. Don't. Oh. 
Okay, okay giga, giga down. down. Okay, giga down. Advance. Oh. Have you act? Yeah. Okay, I'll admit, these might be a bit powerful. Um, Martha. Yeah. You know how we've been getting lag occasionally? Yeah. Do you think it might be them? Yeah. I'm being attacked by a zombie. Hang on. That was a bit of a shock for us. We hadn't really seen any wild carnivore dinos near the base since we started the park. Of course, far out towards the swamp and the jungle, there were plenty of carnivores. But the fact we were seeing them this close to the base proved just how far out we had built, and that we would definitely need a wall or some sort of barrier to stop them from wandering too close to us again. It also made us realise that we could finally fight back against them. That was all I had done in week 10, but before I end this video, I want to quickly recap on what we have built over the last five weeks. My main focus has been on finishing the carnivore area, which has seen me build close to a dozen new pens and well over a dozen new dinosaur breeds. We had the raptor pens that will have goat launchers, a large pen containing several different species of dinosaur, spino pens that are half water, and so much more. And of course, the Dinosaur Fight Club, which took just so much time to build. These five weeks have also seen a mass expansion of the park as a whole, with entire new sections such as the Galaminius Pen and its hotel being built, and Martha upgrading the road and path system to cover almost the entire left side of the park, with there now being a few more car parks and helipads spread around. From a utility point of view, we had some massive additions with the auto smelter being done, a new, far more efficient system of ore collection being created in the auto miner, and of course, the nuclear reactor that powers it all and the train system that allows for far faster travel across the park. Before we could properly start on a new zone, we needed to sort out our resource issue. A few weeks earlier, I had installed a digital miner and ore duplication system into the basement of our lab, so that we could get a steady stream of resources. Now, this system did work well enough, but by about halfway through week 10, we had mined pretty much all of the resources we needed from our base. So we came up with an idea. We would build a new factory on the far end of the park that would act as not only a new place for the digital miner, but also a dedicated space to make new vehicles and process our resources. Of course, we wanted this to not really be part of the park, but more of an add-on hidden just out of sight so Martha made the road up to the factory just north of the herbivore zone and also had a bit of a spruce up of that area while she was at it. While she did this, I got hard at work trying to make a security barrier for the security booth she had made. This single barrier drove me borderline insane. It became a challenge that I refused to back down from. I knew to raise the barrier, I would need to use frame teleporters to teleport the barrier to a separate location, then use a slider system to swap out the lower barrier for the raised one and vice versa. Just trying to get this sliding system working took so much effort, far more than I expected. Eventually, I got it working, but I will admit it is not exactly the fastest or most efficient system. I know I can get it to work a lot smoother, but that is an issue for another day, when I have the mental capacity for it. We've got a block called a... Oh, of course you are. Uh, called um, oh. a frame teleporter. Right, from the funky locomotion. Okay. So, just stay there, watching the barrier. Okay. I'm just going to show you this in action. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. It, ta it takes a few seconds. I can fix the timings. Uh, I just don't know how to do it yet. <laughs> well, no, I do, but it's going to take me a while to... I had enough of it last night. Should, in Fair three, enough. two, one-ish, be transferring back. It's not transferring back. Oh, there it is. There, there it we is. go. Yeah. Um, it, goes quicker the, it goes quicker going down than it does going up. I'll say that. So I'll show you why it's so troubled. I think it's... Yeah, here we are. So if you come here... Just... Holy shit. Yeah, just look into this pit. This is what it's doing at the moment to transfer over. For fuck's sake. 
That was so. That's so much effort for something we will never use. Yep. Um, do you have dirt on you? Uh, no. I'll come back for it later. Nearby, so. Um. Leaving Martha to make a start on the factory, I decided to, at the very least, begin the entrance to the main feature of the aquatic zone, the underwater glass tunnel. So to get down there, I built an elevator and this super long corridor which leads to where the underwater tunnel will begin. To speed up traversing the tunnel, I threw in these escalators, but instead of making them vertical, I kept them flat to make warping speed faster. Martha's suggestion, I made some scuba gear so that I wouldn't drown myself trying to build the tunnel. Using my newly constructed scuba gear, I constructed this large glass tunnel that went straight through the lake located just south of the Carno zone. Now, once I built the tunnel, the real challenge came, draining the water from inside it. Initially, I thought I would use a buildcraft pump and just pump all of the water into tanks, but quickly I realised this would take forever, so instead I just used a building wand and a bunch of dirt. To walk through the tunnel, I made a catwalk with a glass floor. To get this design, I literally just used some glass tables, although I do need to add some railings eventually. With that sorted, I drove down to where the factory would be, so that me and Martha could use diorite to make a plan. It took us a long time just to decide what blocks we would be using. A problem only made worse by Martha getting distracted because she saw the first wolf we had seen on this island and decided she would chase it around for ages to make it a dog. Eventually though, we decided on a rough plan and I wired up the storage system to the factory and moved some energy cubes over to act as portable batteries. To start with, I just made the floor plan of what machines would go where and built the walls, the sloped roof and the chimney for the main factory floor while Martha built the rest of the exterior. After spending several hours on that, I went back to the aquatic zone and constructed this moon pool with a functioning door that opens into the lake, and a moon pool that literally lets you dock the vehicle which would make traversing the lake so much easier, the sea moth from Subnautica. This was one of many things that we added to the mod pack that I just completely forgot about, because I never really had a reason to use it. I got super excited about the sea moth when I made it, so instantly went to place it down. Then got confused why it wasn't moving, and after a bit of trial and error, I remembered it needed fuel. So one quick trip to my storage system later, I got it working. And it was just beautiful. It can even go into the moon pool holder and drop out into the water just like the game. As per usual, once I began to make progress in one part of the park, I got bored and went back to another. This time, I made two quantum entanglopers to literally teleport electricity from the main power grid to the factory. Now, these were super expensive to make, but I still think it was easier than digging a physical power system. I wired this system into a bunch of capacitors, then linked those capacitors up to a switch to turn on and off the power, and a device that measured how much power was passing through it. While I did this, Martha finished the exterior of the factory, which she purposefully made to look as much like a prison as possible, so that we can drain the hopes and dreams out of our workers. Oh, she also kidnapped a pig. For some reason. Not really too sure why, but it's Martha, so who knows. Down by the lake, I took inspiration from SeaWorld, and made these steps and seating area for people to watch the water dinos swim around and eat their food. I even added this little food stand that sells fish pie, because I wasn't sure what other food to put there. Finally, it was time to put down our first fish, so I spent a bit of time with some fine nets to gather a bunch of plankton and krill before grabbing some reza dust which we already had ready to go, and hopped into the sea moth. To be honest, placing them down, I just had to sort of hope that they would survive and grow into adulthood because the lake is just that large that it wouldn't be easy to monitor them like it was with other pens. Running over to the factory, I quickly built a proper garage, just so that I can finally move all of our vehicle workbenches from outside the lab to their own dedicated area. To celebrate, I made us two motorbikes, a delivery van that you can actually walk around inside of, and an ambulance. With the Carno zone now being completed, I also quickly made this little map and put it around the park. I plan to make more of these maps for other zones eventually. My first objective going into week 12 was to place down some more water dinos, 
so I quickly made up a few Styxes and placed them down in the bottom of the lake. It wasn't until later when they grew up that I actually realised they have stripes that glow in the dark on them. But this made me realise just how insanely difficult it is to see anything in the water. So I made a trade mat and a bunch of night vision potions. For now, you only need an egg to buy a night vision potion. But later this will be changed when I eventually sort out a currency system. Looking over at the Kano area, I realised we had this little strip from the top left down to the central middle, where there is nothing but grass. This is a bit boring, so I went along and planted a bunch of prehistoric ginkgo trees to add some much needed depth. I do plan to go around a lot of these big empty areas and add in prehistoric trees, and also doing a bit of terraforming to make the world look that little bit better in the more boring areas. I went back to the factory to finally get some of the machines down. The first one I wanted to build is the Arc Furnace from Immersive Engineering. This colossal multi-block structure is the best furnace in the mod, able to smelt many different blocks at once. When combined with an ore crusher that lets you duplicate ore production, this Arc Furnace can be absolutely incredible. However, it does have one major weakness. It needs constant maintenance. This comes in two forms. The first is slag, which the furnace will every now and again throw out and will clog up the machine, stopping it from working if not regularly emptied. However, you can use pipes or conveyor belts to remove the slag and filter it into a chest. The other drawback is the need to produce graphite electrode rods, which will deteriorate over time and need to be regularly replaced to keep the furnace running at peak capacity. Before I turn the arc furnace on, I quickly made a fermenter and a squeezer. The fermenter is especially important since it can be used to produce ethanol, which is used for fuel in many of our vehicles and can be used instead of lava. To get my electrode rods, I threw a bunch of coal coke into the grinder to make coke dust, then smelted this dust before putting the result into the metal press to make electrode rods. I also very quickly wired up a diamond chest and pipe system to the arc furnace to remove the slag from the machine. I was about to call it there for now in the factory, when Porkchop approached me. He asked if he could move into the factory. So, without really questioning it and wanting to clear room in our already crowded lab, I built him a little office up top. When I left him there, I swear I could hear maniacal laughter, but I am absolutely sure that there is nothing to worry about. With that done, I finally set my sights towards one of the biggest single buildings we were aiming to build. The museum. From the earliest planning stages of the park, we knew we wanted to build a museum, and we knew we wanted to build it right between the two lakes. Despite this, we had been really reluctant to make a start on it, because we both knew it would be a large project and take a lot of effort. For now though, all I did was build the outside of the entrance, for which I made a big circle with a bratchy skeleton surrounded by a pond in the middle. I then made a bunch of coal in F and placed them in the pool. While I was at it, I couldn't resist making a pair of piranhas and placing them in the fish tank in the bedroom. Back at the factory, I placed down the digital miner to start automating our ore production again. But at first, our ore production did not seem to be working. I eventually realised that I had mixed up the cables, so one quick fix later and I got it all working again. And it was beautiful. I just really like seeing the ore dropping into the grinder before being carried out and taken into the arc furnace via pipe. And watching the arc furnace work is just so cool. It's all just so quick and I love it. But at the water zone, I started digging out the other side of the tunnel. Now, for some reason, I decided I wanted to build a big underwater restaurant. And I can say I almost went insane building both this and a coffee shop. The underwater restaurant had a giant glass window, which trying to install it was just insanely annoying. I don't know why, but this restaurant took me way, way too long and drove me insane. Meanwhile I was losing my mind underground, Martha built Stephen. Now, some context is needed here. Stephen is something Martha had built on a theme park we had built using a roller coaster mod a few years back. It served as part of a ride in the Viking Zone, where the roller coaster goes through the mouth and down the throat of the sea monster. 
I knew I wanted to build an aquarium here, but didn't know exactly how I wanted it to look like. Luckily, Martha suggested she rebuilt Stephen to act as an entrance. And you know, I think it looks great. Martha also made another egg farm over at the factory, because at this point, I think she's just gone completely insane with the eggs. Deciding I wanted to place down a new dinosaur, I got one ready that Martha had been wanting to see for ages. The Mosasaur. Okay, um, I'm not really too sure what you're gonna do. Just sit here. Oh. Do you wanna... Yeah, because I'm not too sure how you're gonna be able to do this without drowning, but... Off we go. I can't see shit anyway, for the map. Okay. Oh my god, this thing is massive already. Oh, and it's spinning, but it's down. That's what matters. Is that it? What is that? This is the Mosasaur here. Oh, I It's can't not an adult shit. yet. It's still a baby Mosasaur. Oh, I'm drowning. What I didn't realise was just how massive the Mosasaur would get. After this, we came together to argue about what we would build the museum out of. Which we would eventually agree on. Now, I mean, honesty, to be honest, we've been here for about 20 minutes just deciding, deciding on colours. Um, However, I big tile. Not big tile for the floor and for the wall. Rather um, who knows? I'll just do a series of different marble yeah. textures. Worst case scenario, we can rip out the floor and go from there. Yeah. First off, I expanded the pier area at the water zone to loop it around on the side Stephen was. Then I realised it was a bit boring not being able to see any of the water dinos from the pier. So I came up with a solution, replacing the bottom of the lake with ocean to add a backlight. I used the sea moth to help navigate down there, and admittedly, this was another thing that took ages. But hey, at least I got a lot of clay from it. Oh yeah. And I was absolutely terrified of the Mosasaur. I mean, just look at how colossal it is. But, at the end of the day, all the effort and concern of being eaten was totally worth it. You could now actually see what was inside the pool from the surface, which is always a bonus. It was now time to build the aquarium, but when I opened Stephen's mouth, it was filled with a bunch of mobs. Which, you know, admittedly normal and expected. What was not normal, however, was that one of the zombies had angel wings. I'm still not exactly sure what that was about. For the aquarium itself, you enter through Stephen's mouth before coming into a small petting pool. Following this right, you enter a slightly larger pool with a little balcony area. Beyond this, you come into a small maze of tanks, each filled with a different fish inside. This then connects to yet another water tunnel where the water luckily hides this awfully designed boat I made. On the far end of the tunnel is the gift shop, which sells toys of the aquatic dinosaurs in the area. All of this is linked up to the steps on the other side of the aquatic zone. Just to add some more depth to the area, I added this park to bridge the gap between the aquatic zone and this massive empty area that I am still deciding what to put there. I do really like this little park, and this is exactly what I was on about wanting to add earlier. I like adding in all of these prehistoric plants and trees as well, because I think it helps make the area stand out. I realised it was also time to build something I really should have built much earlier. So I went to the docks at the bottom of the park, and expanded it to add probably one of the worst looking boats ever. But I guess it could have turned out worse. I at the very least like how this bridge looks to get off the boat. The idea here is that the guests are brought to the park via boats, just like in the Jurassic World films. So, since this is for all purposes the true entrance of the park, I added a giant sign and placed down a giga skeleton and some other decorations. The entrance is something I do plan to come back to, to make it all come together a little bit more nicely. The start of week 13 had me going to my room to sleep, just to find that one of my piranhas has somehow died and their items have dropped onto the floor. I'm guessing I forgot to feed them or something? Either way, it was just a bit annoying. Straight after this, I ran over to the T-Rex pen and finally made a cave that was the right size for it. Yeah, I know I said I was going to do this weeks ago, but I finally got around to it. Now the T-Rex doesn't just stand in a corner and spin. So that's a result. 
While I was in a productive mood, I also swam down to the aquatic zone to put down some Palaeosauruses and some Itchies. Because the more dinosaurs, the better. Meanwhile I was getting all of these dinosaurs ready and placing them down. Martha was hard at work building the exterior of the museum. This was something which, to be honest, I think we had sort of wanted to do much earlier. A lot of my initial ideas of the park saw the museum being built in the first few weeks, as it was meant to be a centrepiece of the park. But with hindsight, I actually am glad that we waited so long to build it. You see, I think we both learned a lot over the last 12 to 13 weeks we had been building, and I think if we had built the museum earlier, it might not have turned out as well as it did. Another advantage of the museum finally being built was that it filled in one of the two massive empty areas left in the park, with the other area being in the bottom right between the aquatic zone and the entrance. For weeks I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do with it. I did have a few ideas about turning it into a park of some kind, but I could never really decide. Eventually I decided to just bite the bullet and make a start on the zone. I had realised just how many small dinosaurs we had had that weren't actually in any of the enclosures. We had glossed over many of them for a variety of reasons, but mainly because I think we had a bit more of a focus on going for cooler, more iconic dinosaurs. My new plan was to transform this part of the map into a more child-friendly zone, with these little dinosaurs running around so that they can be petted. Before I could even start, however, there was a lot of landscaping that needed to be done. All around this part of the map, there were dozens of holes that went down into the cave system that I needed to flatten out. While I was at it, I also threw some spawning prevention torches under the ground to prevent any mobs from spawning in the middle of the areas. While that was sorted, I still needed to get rid of all the bushes and tall grass, because it would be annoying for me while I was building. Now, I could have done this by hand, but instead I got one of our cars and just ran over all of the plants. All of this landscaping did give me an idea. For the entrance of the zone, I was going to create a little garden centre to try and sell our prehistoric plants to visitors. This meant that anyone who wanted to cut through this part of the park would have to go through this shop, which I thought was a pretty fun idea. I set up all of these little plant holders, but even then I wasn't able to fit all of the prehistoric plants from the bod inside. For the tills, I just used conveyor belts so that items could actually go along them. I also made the exit function as an airlock, where you get out using pressure plates, but have to use buttons to get back in, to prevent the dinosaurs from getting loose. While I was building the garden centre, I kept hearing zombie noises coming from under the ground, so after getting frustrated, I began to tear up the ground, and that was when I discovered a dungeon. My solution to this was excessive firepower by using a flamethrower to clear out the room. In the chests, I did find some Jurassic Craft music discs and a few other good items. After clearing out the dungeon, I spent about an hour setting up the outer fence to make sure that none of the dinos would accidentally get loose into the rest of the park. For the airlock on the other side of the park, I built a nice little cafe. For the blocks, I chose to specifically use wood from the prehistoric trees. This was my first time using any of them for a build, but I think they worked pretty well especially the Aracusia floors. I surrounded the cafe with a small pond that I filled with fish and used some wooden rope bridges to cross. On the inside, we have a small little kitchen where, while I was building, I remembered that the Mr. Crayfish mod had a cookie jar. I legitimately cannot believe I forgot about this. I also may or may not have gone on an expedition to the jungle again, because I didn't realise that we already had a cocoa bean farm set up. Regardless, after a long period of time, I got all the cookies into the jar, then drove on to the other side of the park to help Martha out in extending the museum. I made these two corridors to connect the central museum to the back building, where we plan on putting a giant skeleton on display. In the middle gap, Martha put down these super tall trees to make a type of courtyard thing. 
Speaking of trees, I got my axe and went back to the new small dinosaur area and began chopping down most of the trees in the zone. It made me appreciate just how good the mod that lets you cut down a tree in one go is, because that mod for some reason does not work on the rubber trees, which was very annoying. Once the trees were gone, I went off into the corner and decided to build a mini playground. The first thing I built for this was the slide. Now, I will admit that this slide isn't exactly my best work on this island, but it works. Sort of. Right next to the slide, I set up a bouncy castle that is so bouncy you can even bounce onto the top of it. I am sure that would not be a health and safety issue whatsoever. Actually, now that I think about it, nothing in this park is health and safety approved. I mean, where are the railings? In an attempt to redeem myself for the slide, I used chiseling bits and created some swings. Now, if the slide wasn't exactly my best work, I personally think that the swings may actually be some of my greatest. They look more or less how I wanted them to, and as an extra bonus, later I did catch some of the small dinos hopping onto them. Since there weren't going to be any specific pens for this area, I knew that I wanted to build some small houses for the dinosaurs instead. I designed these small one block high wooden homes and scattered a bunch of them all around the area. While I was at it, I also made a small oasis pond and a food cabin facing towards the lake. To finish off the builds, I went around and put down all of the trees and paths for the area. From there, it was finally time to put down the dinosaurs. At first, I put down a few of them to make sure I got the right ones. Then later, I came and put down a bunch more. Apart from the dodos, who actually seemed to stay together in a little group, my favourite were these leos because they would hop everywhere, and I think it's just really cute. This entire zone took me about a day or so of building, and while I was doing that, Martha was off making even more progress on the museum, even constructing the exterior of the second floor. Now, for some reason, when I finished the small dinosaur area, I decided I wanted to go to the service corridor at the back of the herbivore zone and build a detention cell for spies, trying to steal our secrets. What exactly inspired me to do this, I'm not really too sure, but I probably should have done it sooner. With the park nearing completion, it won't be long until we accept guests. And who knows what some of them might try to steal. I made two cells each, with two beds and a toilet. Overseeing these espionage cells is our security guard, Vladimir. Straight after this, I met up with Martha to place down a few skeletons in the museum. That's a bit better. Problem is also lining it up, because look, it's at an angle now. I'll, I'll sort it out at some point. What are we doing? What are we putting in this middle bit? Hang on. What middle bit? Oh, in there? I was thinking just yeah. like a gazebo in a little park. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to maybe put some dinosaurs or something in it. No. I mean, I'm not opposed to having like a little micro-raptor thing, but I think it would be better... Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we can just leave it as a dino area, but... Because I can't be asked to put stairs in, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, we'll just leave it as a dino area then. Here's your marble back, minus two. I've always got marble on me. I mean, this is a bit better for being central. Yeah. It does show just how mla uh, massive the Mosasaur is, though. I thought it was going to be longer. I mean, it's huge, but it might just be because that room's huge. As week 13 was coming to an end, I quickly went back to make a bit more progress on the entrance to the park. I slightly changed the paths, and got rid of the Giga Skeleton to instead replace it with three new ones, with those being a Kano, a Titanis, and a Susho. Personally, I think this display looks far better than the Giga, simply because the Giga doesn't have any different skeleton poses yet, and it is a little too big for the entrance. In preparation for the park finally opening, I started by expanding the docks at the entrance of the park. Currently, we only have a single dock arm, and I feel like it looks a bit weird on its own, so I very quickly built a second one. I might end up building yet another in the final week when I come around to put in the final touches on the park, but for now, it will do. My main build for this week is going to be the Mountainside Hotel. 
While we already have the Galaminius huts in the herbivore area, this hotel will serve as the main and by far largest hotel in the park. The location for it is in the mountain between the aquatic zone and the small dino area, with both sides having an entrance. The main entrance will be in the small dino area, so I got myself the mining laser and drill, and began mining out the entrance corridor. I knew how I wanted the lobby to look, and to clear out so much room, I was going to need a machine. So, for the final time, I went back to the storage system and got out the quarry. Honestly, this single machine has served me so well while building the park. Without it, I may never have finished the underground animal food area, the nuclear reactor, nor the dinosaur fight club. Whenever I needed a large area clearing, it has been my go-to device. So you would think after all this time, I would remember to bring levers to turn it on. With the stuff sufficiently cleared, I began to work on the lobby. For the floors, I used the Aracusha prehistoric wood block again, because I really like how it looks as wooden planks. For the centre of the lobby, I put down a spino skeleton. At first, I had just wanted this as a placeholder, and would swap it out for something else, but I actually ended up really liking it. For the front desk, I left some complimentary cookies out for check-in. Building the bedrooms ended up being a bit more of a challenge than I anticipated, because I got ahead of myself. Each of the 27 bedrooms in the main part of the hotel are fully furnished with beds, a TV, custom-designed wardrobes and mini-fridges, as well as a fully furnished bathroom. To build all of these took ages, and is yet another case of me dedicating way too much time on a single build that I could have cut in half. With the main 27 rooms done, I decided to add chiselled numbers to all the doors. Why do I do this to myself? With that done, and my sanity completely destroyed, I dug an elevator up to the top of the mountain. You see, while building the rooms, I remembered that the industrial craft mod lets you make hot spring water. So I spent ages filling up a fluid slash canning machine with water that turns water into hot spring water. The location of the hot spring gives a really nice view of the surrounding area, and the aquatic zone of the park, however, I didn't realise that it needed lava beneath it to stop it turning back into water. So one quick trip to the nether later, and I got the hot spring set up properly. I also didn't realise that the hot spring gives regeneration while you are inside of it. Back in the lobby, I dug a hole in the floor and made a little Microraptor pen that has a seating area above it so you can watch the Microraptors while waiting. Now, do you remember when I built the Aquatic Zone how insane I got while building the underwater restaurant because it just took far longer than it should have? Well, let's do it again, this time for a few underwater hotel rooms. Each of the four underwater rooms seem a fair bit bigger than the standard 27 in the main hotel. They also have a far better view showing the underwater area, and those fish aren't dead, I promise, they're just, um, they're just sleeping. Getting bored of the hotel, I decided to go on over to the museum to make some progress on it. First thing I did was build a small cafe on the side facing towards the long neck pen. I also went around and started putting down skeletons just to get a feeling on which skeletons will go where. In the final week of the park, I plan to actually go through the museum and beauty up the skeletons and their positions. Opposite the cafe, I designed the gift shop, which sells small dinosaur toys. The gift shop would lead to a dramatic FPS drop every single time we came near the museum. After taking that little break, I returned to my work on the hotel and began building the main restaurant. The general idea was that this restaurant would be the general buffet one, where there would be a more expensive one round the corner. To keep with the theme of the restaurant, I put out a bunch of breakfast food items on plates for the guests to help themselves to. Opposite the restaurant, I also quickly built a swimming pool with a bit of a beach theme. Initially, I wanted this to be far larger, but I ended up getting frustrated with the designs, so I left it as a much smaller pool. While I was making the pool, squids did actually start spawning inside it and swimming around. As I was drilling away underground, clearing room, Martha was hard at work building this animal barn and the surrounding wheat farm. The reason that we built this barn, despite the fact that we have an animal farm underground, was simply for appearances. We wanted visitors to think these animals are treated well before being sent to be eaten by the dinosaurs, 
instead of just being thrown out of the floor. I also like how the wheat field fills up an empty space we had in the park. That's always a bonus. The final rooms for the hotel I built was this penthouse on the top floor. The penthouse was far larger than any of the other hotel rooms. In fact, it has two bedrooms in it, each the size of the other hotel rooms. The penthouse also has two large windows, both of which face towards the aquatic zone, giving a decent view of the large lake in Spino Pen. Currently, I only have the one penthouse, but I am considering building another one or two of them. To go with this higher end part of the hotel, I built a higher end restaurant that serves more expensive food as well. The final build I did for the 14th week was designing this cute little bookshop next to the entrance. To be honest, there wasn't really much of a reason to do this other than I had it on my list of possible ideas, so decided to tick it off. Also, it was a good job that I built another dock arm, because yet another boat turned up. It was at this point I decided to show Martha what I had built this week. So, this is what I've built so far. On the left, we have the standard restaurant, and it still has this really awful check-in book. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Well, yeah, that's what it's meant to be. I know that's not exactly what it is. We've got a nice little breakfast selection. We've got Where'd sausage, egg, just to keep you happy, um, bacon. You've got a lot to. It should all be eggs. Just toast, got a lot to get rid of. mushrooms. Yeah, I know you've got a small egg problem. Got a little swimming pool down here. That's a swimming pool. Well, oh, yeah. What did you think it was? An enclosure for something. Wherever oh, I thought to. there was a hole in the wall, but it just hung No, I had that just. I had that just. But yeah, so these are all the changing rooms. Yeah, Any look, showers? Can... Uh, no. Okay. Uh, and you come through here, we've even got a little diving board, and I've made a very, very bad um, lifeguard seat. Oh, that's what that is. Josh, I'll be honest, I think they might die. Yeah, but they're lifeguards, so who cares? Oh my god, it's actually bouncing. Oh yeah, it actually works. Yeah, so we've got the little uh, front check-in desk here, and then if you follow me... You can buy things. Yeah, did you not know you can buy stuff on here? No. Where I've do you never, think literally I... never seen one before this. There, there's a few throughout the park, um, but it's <laughs> the same, like, it's the same stuff you buy everywhere, to be honest. Um, like, I they all have the same traits. I've had a look, and I can't seem to work it out, so... If you bought one? Uh, I did on a single player. Oh. Okay, this is the lobby. I think you've seen the lobby, haven't you, for the thumbnail? Yeah, I took a photo. Yeah, what do you think? It kind of looks like you want to shake your hand. Yeah, it does. Mm. I meant about the lobby, not about the dinosaur. Oh. <laughs> um, are people going to die when they fall off the East Bath? You know, you're not the first person to raise... Uh, I did see someone comment about how there's no railings in the entire park. And it has made me think that... Just... Someone's going to die very quickly. And it's yeah, at some point. Related. I mean, look down here. We've got a pack of Microraptors. They look depressed. Oh, come on. Not everyone here is depressed. But you... Okay, they then. They've got no water. Well, come over here and have a cookie. Where are you? Ooh. There. Oh, you're less depressed mm -hmm. now. No, no, don't steal all the cookies. Oh, my God. Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you some of the rooms. So, oh, I've also got this working. Um, a remote elevator, so you can activate the elevator from outside of it. Oh, these are cool, aren't they? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, all the rooms in this bit are the same, um, so just pick any of them to go into. Someone's going to die. You bastard. <laughs> okay. <off>. okay. <laughs> but yeah, so these are the uh, rooms. We've got a wardrobe with nothing There's in no it. no toilet. <laughs> Yeah, I know, there's not a single toilet in this park. I am going to have to do something about that at some point. Right. Uh, there's a mini fridge here. Did you really build a bathroom if we get to put a toilet Shh. in there? Small details, but yeah, we've got the mini <laughs> fridge. The fuck is... Is that like... What is that? A mini fridge! I've said it three times. Yeah, I right, know, but what is it? I <laughs> built what? it myself. Oh. Yeah, I built it for chiseling bits. It's not a... Um, it's not part of the mod. I would like you to appreciate the effort I went to of putting numbers on all the doors. Josh, you might have some... You might have a bit too much free time. Yeah. 
Well, I work, um, what, how many hours is it now a week? About 60, I don't 70 know, hours but I a week. feel like it's not enough. <laughs> right, up we go. I just don't sleep. That's the trick. <laughs> sleep is for the weak, Martha. It's for the weak. Anyway, um, so, this is what I meant when I said your right? plan to build a wall... Ah, uh, I need to fix that. Uh, around the wall side of the park might be redundant. Wait, I might be able to fix that. I can't fix that. I took the dirt out. You've actually made cool looking paths. This is a hot spring. Gives Holy you regeneration. Shit. Turns out we've had a hot spring water. You know how we've used industrial craft 2 like a dozen times across all the, those mod packs we've done? Yeah. The entire time we had this hot spring water that regenerates you. How'd you how did you get it? You get a canning machine and you just put water in it and a stick. So it was relatively easy. Insanely easy, yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake, okay. Uh, but look at the view. You can see all the way down to the uh, big fish pond. Wow, none of it's loaded. <laughs> it is for me, it's just because you're chunk distance. Oh, I can see Stephen. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see Stephen easily. Um, right. Also, there's, um, I'm currently in a cloud. Yeah, I didn't really think about that when I started building. Okay, uh, this isn't all the hotel rooms either. So, this is Ooh, the penthouse. Oh, that is very pink. It's red. Well, it looks pink on my screen. I might build another one at some point, but look at this. You can see it straight... is red, it's just my monitor. I have to put it on the other one. Ah. You can see down to the um, Spino, and you can just see the Spino bouncing up and down from here. I can't, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> just put your render distance up. Uh, no, upstairs. You can't be asked. So we have two bedrooms and a bathroom that also does not have a toilet. <laughs> oh no, it does! Oh my god, the only toilet! There's one toilet in the entire park. Okay, I've done I that. hate you. What yeah, is this? This is the bath. With lopsided water okay. on the end. Yeah. Um. Oh my god. Down to the basement. Oh yeah, this is quite a quick elevator as well. I'm not going to make it out of this. My game would not, will not allow me so to So if you just that. hold C and look at the end of the corridor, oh, you'll I see... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I think it's something... Like an epileptic nightmare. Yeah, I should probably put an epilepsy Holy warning on or something. Shit. Um, so oh, these are the... Oh my god, I hate that. I need to work out how to fix this, but these are the underwater rooms. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, the Mosasaur's so right shit. outside the window. Holy shit, that's huge. Oh yeah, have you not actually been underwater in a while? I haven't been underwater at all because we didn't have enough night vision potions and scuba gear and shit like that. Oh yeah, I never gave you scuba Josh, gear. Josh, I've got to get out of this area because my eyes hurt. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, but that is the end of everything we've done. Well, I've done. Do you want to go and see I've Pork Chop? I've done very little. Yeah? After showing Martha everything, I decided to go and find Pork Chop as I hadn't seen him in a while. Little did I know, he had been building something himself. I don't know when the last time I was over here, but I cleaned it out last time yeah. I was over here. Let me have a look. There's quite a bit left to go, but I need to put in some um, fuel rods. Let me just go and trade for pork chop to see if I can get some more. Martha? Yeah? When was the last time you saw pork chop? Okay, I don't know. Um, okay. He's not there. Um, he shouldn't really be able to do that. Let's just have a look in the area, see if we can find him. See if, like, something spooked him and he's run off. But yeah, so he was down here that I'm meant to build the fuel tanks. And to be honest, I probably will at some point, but I don't use the cars that need fuel, so I've not been forced to... That's new. Did you build this path, Martha? Uh, not the end bit. Okay, oh, there's a, a hole through there. Who knows, um... Why do you... I remember you're the one who built this wall. Why did you use a stone button on a stone wall going through this uh, dark oak forest at night? Okay. Isn't exactly good. Martha, can you stop killing animals? We need to move them into that farm to make people think that we don't have a slaughter farm. Um. Yeah. Where are you? Um, I'm on the path. Where are you? I'm in a hole. <laughs> what the hell is this? Hang on, how the hell are you in a hole? <laughs> what hole are you in? I might have fallen in a one block. Oh, this hole, yeah. Um, yeah, have your blocks back and 
Get oh, out. yeah, it's really nice. Hang on. I've got some, actually. Yeah, I don't know why you're waiting for me. I'll take those. Then. When you're supposed to be a strong, independent woman or something. Who said that? <laughs> Good point. Follow me. Um, so, did you build this? Uh, no. I mean, it's I in your building style, so I'm assuming it was you. Ow! You bastard! No, you don't hit me. Ow, ow, ow! Hang on. Um, Martha, what's that through the door? Can you, can you get the know, angle on it? No, it's just your big fucking head in the way. Um, no. I think it's moving, though. Okay, let me try a password. The blocks were reinforced using security craft, meaning that I couldn't just break in. And without the passcode, I couldn't open the front door. I plan to meet up with Martha and work out how to get inside. However, considering that we plan to finish the park next week and are running out of time to do so, working on the park does actually take priority over whatever it is that Pork Shop is doing. I started the final week on the park by getting rid of some of the sand at the entrance and replacing it with dirt and adding prehistoric trees to naturalise the area. While I was doing this, Martha was putting up a wall around the dock so that new arrivals have to go through the front entrance. She also made several new dock arms, and on the furthest of these, I put down some small boats that we can sail. I will admit, I did have some trouble putting them down at first, but eventually got them lined up properly. Once that was sorted, it was then time to go back to the one large build I had been completely ignoring for about two months now. The train system. The tunnel network was already there for the trains, but it took just so long to replace the bottom of the tunnels with the electric shunting wire needed, and in placing down all of the correct electronic rails and high-speed tracks. Legitimately, I had put it off for so many weeks, just to realise I now had no other choice than to confront it. It took me a few days of building it on and off to finally get all of the tracks down, and get the train stations working. I literally went insane, and at this point, I was just building it to prove a point. What that point was, I still have no clue. But eventually, I got it all working, and even set up a ticket system to pick which station you want to go to out of the four. With those being the laboratory, the reactor, the Carno area, and the herbivore area. The biggest problem with the trains is that sometimes they can be a tad bit laggy. While I was building the trains, it reminded me of something that I had not even thought about in ages. The Tunnel Bore Miner. When we first started, this was one of the main ways to get ore that we had access to, that didn't require us to really do anything. So, I headed far down into the tunnel to see if it was still going. And what do you know? It actually was. Once the trains were sorted, it became time to go to our prison colony and move some of the villagers out into their full-time, unpaid roles. So we took any villagers who had jobs that could be used in the park and moved them around. For example, we took the librarian and placed him in the bookshop. It took me a while to get the relevant villagers around the park, but once I did, I then decided to go around and start placing toilets everywhere. What I didn't realise until much later was that Martha was also doing the exact same thing as me. Now, this did lead to us going from having no toilets in the park to actually having quite a lot. After the toilet incident, it was time to put down the last few remaining dinosaurs in the few pens left in the herbivore area. So I went and placed down a few stegosauruses, trikes, patches, QAs, ankleos, and steerers. While I was dealing with the dinosaurs, I ran back to the museum and finished moving around all of the skeletons to get them in the correct positions, before adding signs for each of them. In the basement of the museum, we added some pallets, a bunch of crates, and to move them around, a forklift. The next thing I did was make a digital map of the park and put it up around the zone to help people know exactly where they were going. But looking at the map, it made me realise that I had forgotten to replace a lot of the trees we had cut down in the first few weeks. So I began a reforestation campaign and spent a few hours running around the park placing saplings. Doing this really made me reflect on just how much the island has visibly changed, and how much work me and Martha have put into terraforming the area. Once all the trees were grown, I immediately knew the time investment was worth it, because it just made the whole park look so much more complete, especially in the area around the museum. To finish up the security side of things, I made sure each pen had at least one CCTV camera. 
For the large outdoor areas like the Long Neck then, I attached cameras to the trees, and it actually looked a lot better than I thought it would honestly. I actually ended up using all 30 of the CCTV slots that my monitor could handle. The final thing that I finished working on in the park was the Lazy River Boat Ride in the Herbivore Zone. Just like the trains, this was a project I abandoned relatively early on because it was laggy and just a pain to work on. Revisiting it, I decided that instead of the self-driving conga line idea I originally had, I would instead have visitors row their own boats. So, to help with boarding the boats, I added a one block deep docking area and had an NPC placed there to help bring the boats to the visitors. Now, to get down to the southern entrance of the river, I had to build this tunnel and use the treadmill escalators one last time. Once I built this hut that served as the entrance to the river ride, the park was finally completed and the boats would start to bring in the first guests. To celebrate finally finishing and having our grand opening, me and Martha went and filmed a world tour. Once the tour was done, we didn't have any more excuses not to deal with the pork chop issue. Now, Martha had actually been surprisingly proactive about this, and managed to secretly follow pork chop entering the new area. While doing this, she managed to get a glimpse of the passcode. So we grabbed our weapons and went to deal with him. So Martha, have you got your guns? Where did you get a flamethrower from? I didn't know. I grabbed it from there. my room. You've got your flamethrower. You have brought your flamethrower, right? No, I didn't realize that. <laughs> what though. what weapons have you brought then? This gun. Okay, so we've both got a gun at least to shoot pork chop. Mm. Let's go. So I'll be honest, I've got absolutely no clue what the hell he's been doing in here, but it looks like there's some sort of dino. So, I don't trust him. I want to take him down. Martha, put in the password. Da, 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 da. What the hell is that? Is that an Indominus Rex? <laughs> From the Jurassic Park films. Okay. Right, pork chop. You've got some explaining to do. Where the heck? Okay. So, Martha, I think we might have made a small mistake here by letting Pork Chop uh, be left to his own devices. I am 100% blaming you for this. I didn't want him in the first place, so, you know, your fault. No, I think your fault. I mean, his son's over there, so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I do pretty much share the same thing. He did mention something about our reactor, so we should probably go straight there. Uh, if we turn right here, it'll be the quickest way, won't it? Yeah, I'll the way to your reactor. Um, <laughs> Martha! Yeah, we're not going that way. I can take him. That's the mining place. Yeah, run, 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 run away. Follow me, run away. They're following oh, us, Martha. Oh, oh, oh my god! They fly! Yeah. Okay, I took one down. Get to me, Martha, get to me. I killed one as well, so... There's another one. I don't know how to reload this. Go a bit well me. Okay, there we go. Okay, right, we're gonna go through the museum, Martha. If we go this way, we're just gonna die. We're just gonna have to go through the museum, okay? Yeah, yeah. Bloody hell, this is a nightmare. The entire park's just falling apart, honestly. Let's go. Um, is that one over the water? I have no idea what you're looking at. Oh, Beyond there. Okay, just keep an eye on the water. I don't want any more to appear. Is that... Oh, no. Yeah, we're not going that way. Follow me, Martha. We're going to go around the back. Right, let's go. We're going to have to go around the back. It's going to be the... Oh, for God's sake. Martha, we're going to have to fight it. Oh, didn't even realise we were there. Okay. I mean, I feel like we could take one. I don't feel like we could take many more of them. Oh, fuck it now. <laughs> what? Oh my god, Martha, we spent literally a hundred days on this. Um Okay. We we gotta go this way, there's no other choice. Um head up onto the catwalk and we'll go around the front. At least the rib cage is still there. I mean, yeah, that's something. The rib cage is still there. The rest of the park is literally burning down. But oh, I don't give a shit. oh my god. Uh I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to run along the catwalk that is quite literally on fire, but I don't think we've got much of a choice. 
Um, Martha, that's not one of ours. Also, the dinosaurs are quite literally on fire. Uh, we're not going that way, Martha. Follow me. We just need to get out of here. I mean, it is cool, Martha, but it's going to eat you. Okay. Gun's ready. We're going to have to take the train to get out of here. It's the only option. Okay. Fuck's sake, they... Oh, uh, oh, God. Kill them. Martha. Out my way. Overwhelming firepower. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. Okay, is the tunnel clear? Uh, I think there's a creeper. I'm on fire, though. So. Actually, I think that might have just been a normal creeper. Okay, let's just go. Um, we're gonna need to be very careful here. Right, we need to get to this reactor before Pork Chop destroys even more of the park. Because if he makes that go critical, it's all over. Oh my God, Martha! Well, it looks like some of the dinos have escaped. Did that, or do you remember back in week one where you were just mining and there was a random Velociraptor behind you? Yeah. In the t tunnel. I wonder if it's the same one. I wonder if it's the same one that's just gotten loose. Oh, right. Let's go. Right, we finally made it to the reactor. We just need to get down there and stop him while we can. Let's go. Martha, shoot on sight, okay? You. Not me, obviously. Pork chop. Oh, um, hang on. Let me just get my key card out. A bit embarrassing. Um... Yeah, okay. Um, my keycard's not around. working. Um, yeah, Martha, I'm about to say something. Do it. <laughs> you've been wanting to do that since we built this place. I mean, you've done it before, but... Oh, God. Martha. Um, I can't fix this. Those reactors are going to blow up. Um, Martha, do you remember when you told me I didn't need four reactors and I only needed one? There was nothing we could do to save the park. It seemed that Porkchop had constructed what looks like a teleporter in the reactor room that was draining the power from all four reactors and causing them to overload. With no choice, me and Martha made a frantic decision.